Hello. I'm alive, hopefully. Oh, oh, okay. So there are people, <laughs> thank heavens. Because I saw nobody before I switched this on. I was like, ah, today, so quiet. Is it a holiday? Is it something like everybody's off or something? You know? <laughs> Hello, you're the first person. Ayona, hey, how are you? <sighs> Evening. Oh, so you are ahead of me. I'm in the morning, you're in the evening. <laughs> hello, 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 people. <laughs> Humans from all over the world. How are you doing? Yeah, I see some very familiar names. Chun Ming. What's your, what's your name? Have I ever asked you if you type it out in characters? What is that? <laughs> Good morning. Martha's Vineyard. How nice. The name. So is it a really a vineyard? Like grape? Jamaica. Hi. Pakistan. Wow. That must be what time now? Evening? 9 p.m. India. Yeah. Canada. Oh, fellow Canadian. Uh, Malaysia, California. Hello. Melody, <laughs> you can come back later to the to the replay. Go to sleep. Okay, I know. Work is more important for sure. Small island of your can explore so far and so <laughs> right, oh, okay, that's why. How cute. Huh. Iraq, wow. <laughs> Literally everywhere, apart from probably Antarctica, <laughs> right? Apart from the, the ice covered bottom or the south end of planet Earth, probably everywhere. Hope you're all doing well. <sighs> yeah. Since last time, since uh, Chinese New Year, I just feel like so much has happened in the last less than a month, 25 days, something like that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Ever since 2023 started, I think things are just like a bit more weird than usual. <laughs> Although we're all Used to it already, still though. It's getting weirder. Snowing there? Well, yesterday, uh, not yesterday, the day before, we had like crazy wind. Uh, right now it's like minus 20 something. So this week is gonna be cold again. Last week was pretty nice. It's like almost above, like hitting zero. Starting to melt the snow and then, then now it's 20 minus 24 again and we're gonna have a whole week of lower temperature in a minus 20 something uh, you know winter is not ready to leave usually you get a cold week um in march even when you get into march uh, there will be like one week that's still super cold like minus 20 something and then ease up but so now we are not yet there <laughs> yeah the whole week coming Next Wednesday is gonna hit minus 30. Huh. Well, it is what it is. So, definitely not out of winter yet. Today, we're mostly gonna talk about the uh, sci fi stuff that's been going on like crazy in China. Things just cluster, right? We've, we've seen that in Dramaland too, too many times when things just like they tend to all come out at the same time of one type of thing. <sighs> Last couple of days was like really, really tough because all the news in the world about everything that's like pretty effed up. Yeah, it makes you appreciate that if you're lucky enough to live in a place where none of those things are affecting you. One lucky, can I just get rid of some, Ugh, come on, go away. I don't need you. You know, something I hate about Windows computer is that it keeps jumping. 
typing all kinds of stuff. I don't want to look at you. Go away. You never have that with a Mac. Jeez. Go away. What are you? Go away. I just want to shut all those pop-ups down. So annoying. Holy. Ah. <sighs> You know, first you have like what goes on in Turkey and Syria, all the crappy news, and then you have what happened in Ohio. Oh heavens. <sighs> it's like, when is the next time when something happens in this world? Is it gonna, you know, just happens to like happen where I am? Then how am I gonna deal with life if that happens? You have like no power over these things. It just makes you feel, I'd rather actually in the way not knowing these things. <laughs> just makes you feel more anxious about existence in general. <sighs> Yay, Singapore, you just finished through body cool. Uganda, oh, so many places in this world. I, I know like people in Toronto, they're literally like buying bottled water. It's like everybody, like they, cl they clean the shelves because I've heard friends from Toronto of like going like, like you know like supermarkets completely just 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 sold out all types of bottled water because it's too close it's like less than 300 miles hiya hiya I hope like people watching my videos at least none of you got affected by it The whole thing is insane. <sighs> so we have, um, today I'm mainly gonna talk about these two drama, like film and drama of the sci-fi world. We, we probably would talk a little bit about other things as well. Before we go into talk about these things, we're just gonna have a couple of minutes of general chat about things, right? Dramas that are going on, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about Wandering Earth and Three Body and Sci-Fi's future, <laughs> the tiny, tiny genre that is nonetheless irreplaceable and special every in every sense. Danger of incident won't be known until years later. Well, you can already kind of predict what's going to happen. You know, you're not going to get all the results yet in years, but, but with your already sort of like possessed knowledge of chemistry and stuff, you kind of already know. And you have similar things happening, right? In other places. So you can have their data as a comparison or kind of use that to, to predict what's going to happen. It's the same nasty stuff that got released in tons during Vietnam War and which caused a lot of deformed babies that came out later in decades time. So you have that as a live example of things. <sighs> Chen Xinxu, that drama, Xin Luo Ning Cheng Tang, just aired today. I haven't had time to check it yet because I literally woke up and got ready and <laughs> am, am here. So I haven't even like looked at any of the dramas, but I do know that uh, it's pretty funny. I think it's like one of those typical production quality fantasy drama, um, but, but at least it's funny. <laughs> I've seen a couple of clips, it's pretty ridiculous. Happy birthday! Majesty, happy birthday. Mini Chernobyl. In different ways, yeah. You know, I think like radiation, you, you feel like it's more scary, just, just like the concept of it, right? But really in terms of cancer inducing, <laughs> it's like one is like no better probably like than the other or even worse, you know, chemical wise. And, and it's just like really ironic, like 
of all, all the things, you know, like recently, because when I was, when I was recording my video on, uh, on Three Body, the final one, right? At the end of it, I talked about Rachel Carson and Silent Spring, which is something you have to know if you study anything, you know, to do with ecology and stuff. So I think back in the days when I was doing landscape architecture, we, we also had, had, you know, like we have to know it. So, and it's like so instrumental in the whole story of Three Body. And then just after that, like you have, like actually right before that, right, you have this happening in the States. It's just like everything is so weird, the whole universe, when it puts things together. Uh, la 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 Why don't I do Xiao Zhan drama review? Why? If you don't know, ask around. My long time viewers would know that. <laughs> they will answer it for me. Yeah, entertainment, like, I know, like, so many, so many gossips happened during this week about all kinds of people in entertainment business, but it didn't even, like, it, it's not even, like, at the forefront of my mind. At the forefront of my mind is like the existential crisis of living on planet Earth, where everything can just destroy you in in a in a flash of a second. Um, <laughs> of what happened in early, like from beginning of this month to now, or half a month, how many weird things we've seen happening in this world? It's just like those things are too big. Therefore, like entertainment gossip, I don't even like. I see it and it just like goes by. Like the next day, I forget about it. <laughs> Like it's the least important thing because <laughs> like, well, who slept with whom and what, who got married, who's pregnant, who like, like so what? <laughs> so what? It's just one person. <laughs> like it does not matter actually at all. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, it definitely is not getting into my head at all. Although people got really inventive, I guess, like creative too, at, at commenting on those gossips, I do have to say. Particularly when the Chen Feiyu thing came out, oh my god, there are so many geniuses. The, the way they name it is just, it's just, I can only do this. Like, you geniuses. Arthur. <laughs> Arthur. And technically, okay, it's not something that's so terrible, you know, but he basically slept with somebody, which is like, what, what else do you expect? A young guy, you know, like, what do you expect? Like, he, he, he's not gonna do that, you know? Um, the, the, the other, the things that makes it quite, quite embarrassing is just all the conditions surrounding it, right? First is he has this imagery, or at least his whole family is trying to present him in that way. It's like, he's so well you know, <laughs> well-educated, he's so good-mannered, his parents are so that type of people, and he doesn't even, you know, dare sitting down at the dinner table with his parents. He's the good kid, right? So, his public image is that, and it's, you know, so that makes the contrast and it makes it worse. The other thing is, um, the girl, like, like the, who, 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 who is, who's in the photo, she used to be Chen Feiyu's fan club's Zhan Jie, which is like the head of the uh, fan club type of thing. They usually are in charge of, you know, sending out materials, uh, take organizing events, taking photos. They're like the fan club leaders. So basically sleeping with your fans, right? So that makes it worse than say, if you just sleep with a random stranger. Mm -hmm. And also this woman is married. Now she is married after <laughs> like the, the photo time, because I think it's 2021. July, people even like managed to dig out the exact date when the photo was taken. And then she got married last year. So technically she was single or not married yet. Right. Um, when, when they were that, like that, but then there's like rumors about like the photos are actually leaked by the girl's husband, <laughs> like, uh, whatever, you know, who cares? <laughs> um, you know, it's like, at first it's not, nothing illegal, right? And if back then both of them were single, it's like not, technically there's nothing you can say that's wrong about it. But he, 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 he is a, 
idol, like he's a traffic, basically. He wants to be a traffic actor whose whose imagery basically depends on all the fans, uh, 99% female fans, uh, their projection. Idealizing him as the perfect whatever, boyfriend or whatever, like, you know, he, he, he's, he's, he needs to take that. That identity is, is what he has in public. And when you do this, it destroys that image. And it makes your sort of like commercial value, you know, like greatly impact your value. Basically your commodity, you are selling yourself as one thing, but then you get found out as something else. So basically you are a fake and fraud product. So your value declines. That's it. You know, it has nothing to do with, you know, a moral judgment or anything. And it will be weird to actually expect 20, early 20 year old guy, you know, but staying, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Cause in 10 years, even when they want it to happen, they probably can't make it happen all the time. So might as well just do as much as they can when they're young. Just saying. <laughs> so, but, but you know, you're in the game. So, 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 so that it is what it is. They should actually just have have his chart, whether it's astrology chart or Chinese puzzle, you know, put it out and look at it and just like face the fact if this, well, I haven't had time to look at it. I don't know his birth time, but if say just like in his birth chart, there's just no indication of he is destined for fame or being, you know, like getting his like money and meal and his livelihood in being presented in public, which it's easy to read, you know, really, if you're destined for screen and destined to be a household name, it's going to be in your chart, like shining like stars. You're going to see it. It's like, yeah, okay. If this person has none of that, just don't try. Don't even try. Cause you can like, you're never going to get it. <laughs> big fame, big money in this game is not something you can work for. It's it, you either have it or not. You, you can't just force it. It's like, if you're supposed to be a scientist, you know, some people are just like naturally talented at studying at researching at working on this, these type of problems. They're destined to, to make a contribution to science and it. You can't force that to happen. If you don't have it, <laughs> it's, uh, when you get older, you understand it's not, it's silly to believe that you can make anything happen. You know, the whole sort of life has endless possibilities often gets misunderstood by people, which they, they take it as like, you can do whatever you like and you can succeed. No. <laughs> okay. You totally misunderstood it. And they should just like, look at his chart. If he's not meant to be famous or anything, just like, 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 you know, give fine. He, he has like the best resources possible in his world with that kind of parents and he really can excel at, at least like he can be backed up. You know, he, he wouldn't be like trapped in a way where like, I have no choice. I have to do this and that, and, you know, three jobs at the t at the same time, just to pay the bill. He would never be facing that. So why, why do you have to force somebody into this business when, when like, he's not supposed to be, it's just so ugh. <laughs> Hard work is all, uh, I, I, you know, as I get older, I really realized hard work is all, often overrated. And also the thing is, if you're not working in the right direction and also like doing, you know, <laughs> you, you're just making your life harder and then not getting results you want. Um, Chinese traditional idiom is 五十之天命, which is by the time you're 50 year old, you would definitely know what destiny has in plan for you. Even if you, you'll naturally know basically what you are meant to be or do meant, meant to be doing, or, 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 you know, like what, what, what's the purpose of your life? But I'd say, you know, the earlier you can realize that the better, you don't have to wait till 50 <laughs> for life to teach you, you know, what you're supposed to be or to do. It would be as, it would be better if you know as early as possible and then flow with it. That, that will make everything so much better. And, and people just often just don't, don't want to, don't want to recognize that.
a lot of people don't know what they want. You know, like I, I say, I want to be a director. Do you know what director even mean when you're a 20 year old? You don't. <laughs> the funny thing is like, if you're a teenager, right. And then you say, I want to be a film director, which is, you know, cool. You know, like you have that, 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 but do you even know, you know, what being a film director entails? You probably have no idea. So how do you know you want it when you don't even know what it is? Right. So often that is, <clears throat> They probably, you know, a lot of people say, I want to be an actor. They don't really want to be an actor. They want what people like successful actors have. They want fame, money. They want that feeling of like, you know, like I can do this. This seems to be actually an easy job than others. You know, I don't have to sit in an office from nine to five. I don't have to, you know, do all this client service and all that. And then I, I get look glamorous. I have so many fans. I am pretty on screen, you know, like my best, whatever is looking pretty like, and, and then, and then that's what they want. They don't want to be actors. They want money and fame and all the, the other things that comes with it, you know, for people who really just want to be actors, whether you're successful or not, you're going to stick with it. Right. And you don't care quite about what the byproduct of being an actor, if you happen to be successful. But look at those young people who got into this business and they say, I love acting. I love art. I love performances. They don't even want to bother to go and read a bit ancient te a text to, to, you know, like just be better educated so you can be a better actor. They don't even want to bother to go to the gym and, and practice because you, you need your body to help you. They don't want to sort out their line delivery and they can't speak proper Mandarin. <laughs> like I, I have passion in acting. It was like, who are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I believe you want to be an actor. Good. <laughs> you don't do anything that actors supposed to do. And yet you say you want to be an actor. No, you just want to be, you just want to be famous and rich and get laid. That's it. <laughs> be honest. <sighs> <clears throat> well, and what, like, I, I see why people do that. Um, I don't like the word because I think it's very unfair because, you know, like whether you can get a good education in a way is, is also not quite always your choice, but I'd say you should be <clears throat> at least trying if you're in, say, if you're in acting, right? To be an actor, you, you need to sort of train your skills. You need to constantly improve and you have to put effort in that. But if say you, from what, for whatever reason, you know, you never managed to get a good education when you're growing up, a lot of that is not up to you. When you're a teenager, when you're a 10 year old or even a seven year old, you can decide, you know, a lot of those things. Um, if conditions are not actually available to you, what can you do? You know? So it would be very unfair to say that, but you know, does it not mean if you don't get a system or school education, in a traditional way, doesn't mean you can't improve on your sort of, but you have to put the effort in. Mm. So the whole word of like the desperate illiterate is a little bit, I don't quite like that. And how people, a lot of people are actually just, they don't really care honestly about that. They, they, they just like join in and, and it, it's a form of internet bullying too. You know, when you think about it, basically they decide if you are, by default, a traffic young actor, right? You must be uh, illiterate and you, you, you like, uh, therefore like just by being that, then you must be wrong in everything, which is also wrong. Uh, right. So I'm not such a huge fan of that whole wave of like people making videos and laughing at he can't answer the, <coughs> he can't answer the, the stuff on stage. Um, I pulled his, I pulled his chart because I think he, he, he said he is a, he's a Sagittarius rising, which would make his birth time within that two hours, which I just looked at his Chinese chart. This guy has two Hua guy, which means that, like, he's not going to talk to other people. He can't, he's, when you have one, you are like a lonely person who does not quite like to have a lot of conversation. You're not basically extrovert and only people who know you well can have like that bring out of you. He has two, <laughs> he has two in his chart. It's like staring at you. So, so Wang Yibo is the type of person, right? He, he's, he's going to refuse talking to you most of the time. If he doesn't know you so well, like, 
So imagine that people like asking him questions like on stage where like all the lights are shining and he's just standing there. He he's not gonna tell you anything. He's gonna just gonna zip it, hundred percent. He doesn't he doesn't communicate. It's it's in his chart. He he can't do it. It's not his natural sort of like you know. <laughs> he he wouldn't be doing that. Wang Yibo. So I like I look at his chart. It's like why do you even expect he's gonna tell you anything <laughs> when you are a stranger? He wouldn't even look at you. He would like barrier. Like there's like invisible barrier between him and anybody he doesn't know. Like don't even try to. <laughs> don't even try. <laughs> You're never gonna get him open his mouth to talk about it. And <laughs> it, it, it's funny. Like when I look at that, yeah. Sometimes when you can't explain it, just look at the chart and be like, oh, okay, that actually explains everything. <laughs> <clears throat> You know, it doesn't mean like this type of person don't think or they don't have opinions. They just, they're just naturally don't, are not good at communicating. They can't just like bring it out and then just tell you. <laughs> Haven't you met that kind of people who are just like a silent as, as a grave, but they know things, they just don't tell you. <laughs> and, and I don't know, like a lot of, a lot of that is is like when you see it on internet is just another form form of bullying but i mean people feel unfair basically it's like oh you haven't done this you haven't done that we have to go through all those years of education so so like you know and then we barely can get into university and get a job that pays a couple of thousand rmb a month and then you you go to like you you're not even educated <laughs> you can't even write chinese like you write 10 characters eight of them are wrong and then you can get a job, you know, you have so many fans, so many girls liking you, and then you get so much money. Basically, people are, are feeling it's just unfair, right? Um, and therefore, <laughs> you know, so that's why they're gonna go at him like that. So, um, honestly, that's where the motivation comes from, where troves and troves of people making content is, first is to join this game of everybody laughing at somebody so that they can vent, they can release their own sort of piled up energy. And then just basically, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> well, when you do this type of public kind of job, you, you inevitably you're gonna see that, right? So, they, they yeah, it, 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 we are all humans, basically. <laughs> it's in this way bad, but in that way also bad. It's just like reflecting each other's nasty human nature <laughs> at each other. <laughs> I find it's really interesting that Wang Yibo actually entered the whole sort of acting world, like the public image world. I feel like it's really not just like what he's kind of like really meant to do. You know, energy wise, it's not the most suitable type of energy you have to be an actor. If, if that's like, when you look at his chart, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just not, not a good choice. Not, not like what you're naturally just, 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 inclined to and can do very well and also bring you happiness you know but anyway he's very young so you know in a couple of years maybe you know the whole thing can can have a different direction of things yeah current current sort of whole industry's standard and stuff is very 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 warped and weird and unhealthy for everybody who's in it <sighs> Like some people are basically like, you know, they're probably not supposed to work on camera. <laughs> They'll be actually much happier when they're not, but hey. Yeah, we have already talked half an hour about things that are not really about. Cause, cause yeah, honestly, this Chinese New Year slot film world is so messy, right? You have some of the most epic fight of this and that that happened. So it's like in gossip land, it's epic. Mm -hmm. If you know how the box office whole thing is going, um, the fight between, the fight with quotation mark, people intentionally just try to make them fight cause they're not really fighting, but 
you know, it's at least in the public's view, it's like two opposite films representing two totally different futures of the film industry and and of that happening with Man Jiang Hong and, and, and Wandering Earth. It's just like a, such a big, such a big oh, thing on the internet. Everybody's talking about it. Um, and so that hasn't completely quiet, quieted down. Um, <laughs> And Wu Ming, you know, like Wang Yibo's film in that is just so much less sort of uh, getting so less of an attention, which is a good thing. Because if the uh, Man Jiang Hong and uh, Wandering Earth are not having that thing going on, then people's attention is going to be diverted to the third one, which one is going to be Wu Ming, right? And he's going to get more <laughs> trouble. So, so in a way, Yi Yang Qianxi took most of the blow uh, in terms of being a traffic young actor these days. In the industry during the Chinese New Year, uh, he, he he kind of like took all the most of the uh, major to concentrated fire, <laughs> and then Wang Yibo slip under like not having that much of a, but but still it happens. Um, well, that that's why I say the whole industry is very very twisted right now. So you're in a game, you're gonna get <laughs> you're gonna get bullets no, no matter how how how, how you know it, <laughs> yeah it's it's the game it. It comes with it. So let's start with today. Let's let's divide and conquer. Uh, wandering Earth, and Wandering Earth and uh, da, 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 uh, Three Body. Now I had a couple of pictures I I, I got on the uh, Google Drive, but I forgot to load it into my streaming live live. Like the streaming software before I clicked this on. Now the problem is they can't stop it because if I do anything, it's gonna jitter like hell. I've tried this before, um, because of the bandwidth and and whatever. <laughs> so so now <laughs> I can't show you the pictures I've, I got ready, which is like related to Wandering Earth. <laughs> very very, <laughs> it's my fault. I got those pictures and then I forgot. To, to, to take it down from my Google Drive because because my Mac is my working computer and, and, and this tiny laptop of Windows is my uh, live streaming computer and they don't talk to each other. So I have to send stuff onto a cloud drive and then download it onto my <laughs> Windows. And then, uh, and so I can't, and I forgot that one step. I just love how, how, how silly I am sometimes. So now I'll try to put it on my uh, phone and see if that can work and just show you going to drive. Clever me, huh? My job, <laughs> you know very well. <clears throat> yes, including my job. Oh. And so Wandering Earth. So why you, why I would say Wandering Earth, even if like say box office wise, it's not gonna, it's not the most successful um, film this year because Man Jiang Hong is the top one, and it's unlikely that Wandering Earth is gonna be able to take over even with the extended key, which is their sort of um, password to 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 the cinemas. Um, they've just extended the. Um, cinema release of Wandering Earth in China until March the 21st. That's a long time. Um, so all the cinemas will get the password to be able to screen the film until then. Um, it's an extended one. So even with the next month being able to having that many more sub screening of this film, I don't think it's gonna, you know, top Man Jiang Hong at the end. But, the, but then, you know, when you think about if a film is successful these days, right? These days in China, the, the easiest thing is go on the internet and see how many are Chuang in China. Second creation, that's the direct translation, which is basically fan work, right? Paintings, fan arts, videos people made, all types of things people do, uh, handcrafts. Um, like you just look at videos and pictures and how, how many fan, fan stuff. If you have like for one IP, one story, just like definitively speaking, exponentially more output from audience, from the public than the other one, then 
you can easily tell which one is actually the more successful IP. Because we I find in. You know, doing all those fan works requires money, time, energy. If you don't like it, you're not gonna bother to do it. It's like me. If I don't like something, I would not even bother to talk about it, let alone like cutting videos at the expense of myself. So just look at fan fan stuff. The more fan work there is of one IP, the more successful it is. You know? And and its influence. Like you can't you can't just look at money as as the uh, you know how much money it generates, because Money is just numbers, but influence wise, right? How, how strong an impact, how extended this thing, um, extensively this can cover other things and how long it's going to continue. All that cannot exactly be easily sort of, um, calculated into money, but those are real values. No, you know, number and money is just a number, but the real value is what people think of it and how long it can stay in people's mind. In terms of like occupying people's attention, and if you want to say that in the very, <laughs> also these days, you know, like the biggest, the most, the wealth that, that, that all those big money trying to mine is other humans' attention and time. So in that sense, Wandering Earth is definitely the winner, <laughs> without a question. Just look at how much stuff people created and who, Whoever bothered to make any fan art for Man Jiang Hong? I haven't seen it. I searched online, nobody. <laughs> you know, so that kind of is very clear about like actually worth something. You know, like the the the, the actual fan art that actually worth something. So pretty 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 easy to tell. So let's talk about Wandering Earth. I I watched it twice in cinema, so I did my best to contribute. <laughs> I, I, but where I am, they don't do it in IMAX. IMAX is completely given to Avatar 2, which is very sad. Like, I, I was like, can you just screen it for like one day on IMAX just for this film? Because I really want to see Wandering Earth on IMAX. Nope, not where I am. Like, they don't give you that. So I can't see it. And for Wandering Earth, there's parts of it, not the whole film, Wandering Earth 2. Um, parts of the sequences are actually in IMAX, like shot in that um ratio and then they're like squeezed into the two two three five but the whole film uh, has parts that's that way so it would be great if we could have that kind of screen but hmm. hey oh the, somebody asked the youtube button i'll, I'll show you i got one <laughs> um i watched it twice in cinema so i think I, i've done my best my be the part and for people who haven't, like, you're not aware of that, this film, actually, the first official cut of it, I think, is like 80 minutes longer than the version you see today, which is 173. So add that on, it's like two, 250 minutes. <laughs> Pretty crazy, okay? Um, so that makes it a four hour and 10 minutes long film in its real size. Um, and then they cut 80 minutes off um, in, in the release. And the, the, the director said, because it can't work, right? You can't have a four hour movie. And then, they, and then they don't want to cut it into part one, part two. They don't want to do that. So they decided eventually to come down to still being one movie, but very long, three hours. So there are 80 minutes of a content that got removed, which probably would make up some of the parts where you're not quite sure what is going on. And then there are more details about certain characters set up in but it will be more clear basically if you have those 80 minutes that you would know why certain things happen that way. And then leading up to the third one, um, in terms of certain, like a million clues they've, they've buried in this film about what they're going to do in the third one. Um, and I've seen like in one of those like interviews or live stream, whatever, um, they were like, can we get the director's cut of the extra 80 minutes? So we have a 250 minutes film video. And, and the director said, well, you, then you have to ask our um, visual director, special effect director, see if he wants to do it. So basically that means they have the story ready, but then before they went into the final procedure of doing all special effects, they decided to cut down 80 minutes and then 
worked in special effects. So now if they put the 80 minutes back, there will be many, many parts of the film that only has the plot and actor acting, but it probably will have green screen. It will have unfinished uh, stuff. Um, so those 80 minutes are not ready made and then got cut off because that wouldn't make sense, right? Budget wise, nobody would do that. It would be something like before they decided, okay, we're going to go with a cinema release of this final cut, then do the special effects. So that's why the director said, if you want to watch the 80 minutes extra, you're going to have to talk to our special effect director guy, see if he wants to do it. <laughs> I don't think so. And it would be silly to release the film with unfinished special effects, right? And that would be like really weird, jammed into the parts that got properly finished. So you probably are not going to get a director's cut of 20 uh, of, of like 80 extra minutes of Wandering Earth 2 ever. And, and I think because of how many, how much digging people have done already on, on this, on this like film, if they release the extra 80 minutes, it probably will leak too much information. Everybody would be able to guess what happens in the third movie. And, and they, they realized that already during the um, road trip of the whole crew going around China, promoting this for half a month, they've been asked too many questions and they realized that, well, all the audiences have managed to guess this, guess that, guess that. We have, we have buried all this thing, hoping people don't realize it, but now they all found, and they probably already guessed a couple of steps ahead. So it would be a bad idea to release extra content because they're gonna be able to figure out what happens in the third movie. So, realistically, I don't think there's going to be a director's cut, including an extra 80 minutes. <laughs> but then the film is going to come out probably in 2020, 2027. We're going to have to wait another four years for the third movie. Hi. Mm -hmm. Well, <sighs> welcome to my live stream. <laughs> well, Bollywood is special, right? Bollywood has its own rules. But honestly, for a heavy impact, lo loud noises, explosion, world collapsing, film four hours definitely would be too much like the three hours is pretty much like a hit on your you know if you sit in front of the screen and see all those explosion for four hours you probably will will completely get wasted maybe not the best idea to do that um so that's the first thing uh, during their road trip um they got asked a couple of questions and some of that actually basically apply, uh, implied what actually happened in the set third second movie so in Wandering Earth 2, there are a lot of things that happens on surface looking like one thing, but actually in reality, it's something else you just don't know yet. And they're gonna, they're gonna tell you in the third one what actually happened. So one thing got pulled out of that is, uh, did the car accident that Andy Lau was involved in when he was younger and that killed his wife and daughter, um, like, is that an accident? Because in the film, you would see, first you see the, uh, well, when the accident happened, there, there's a camera of the right, red dot, right? Like on the road, looking at him. There's that close up shot. So clearly suggesting the AI is staring at the whole thing and watching it. And then if you zoom out when the accident happens, there are three different self-driving trucks at the crossing. And from this side, that side, that side, they're all <laughs> heading towards this car. So they are the extra proof of basically, if this 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 track didn't manage to hit the car, the other one will do the job. They will all, they're all designed to put there as extra to basically hit the car. So his car is planned by the AI, his car crash. And also how, how the crash is so clean, it just takes out the second half net, like <laughs> of the wife and the, and, and the daughter and not him. Like he barely got hurt, right? But the other half completely got, got taken off um and so they asked basically the director if this is the moss planning the whole thing and then the director said yes 
And also, it's not the only car accident that happened. Simultaneously, when that car accident happened, there are 5,000 car crashes that happened in the whole world at the same time. <laughs> and then that's what he said. He didn't say any more, but basically that means Moss planned 5,000 car crashes taking place at the same time in the world so that he hopes probably, or she hopes, because it's Moss, right? You don't know, it hopes at least one person would, because of losing their family, try to upload that person's, person's digital version onto his system. And he probably planned, or she probably planned, or it probably planned this car crash to 5,000 different AI scientists, computer scientists, uh, framework, uh, you know, engineer, whatever. Um, and then see which one of them will do it. So that's like extra foolproof. <laughs> like doing it 5,000 times, at least one person would be, would be doing it, right? So you can say Andy Lau this row, well. his accent, his accident is definitely not an accident. And then he's just one of the 5,000 people who got, who got chosen. And then he happens to be the person who uploaded it in the end. But say, if there are another person who uploaded their family's consciousness or digital version onto, onto like the 550W, you don't know, maybe, 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 you know, like they're not the only person in the system now. There, there are others, it just depends on Moss if, one, if Moss wants to tell them that's the case. So it's really cute <laughs> and crazy when you think about artificial intelligence can do that. So, uh, yeah, well, Guo Fan is, is definitely a fan of three body and he definitely intentionally squeezed in a couple of three body classic things into, into Wandering Earth. For sure, he, he admit that. Particularly like Li Xue Jian, you know, the flash, flash back or flash forward that you're not quite sure of when, when Yaya got, lo got uploaded to the system and suddenly there are three shots of Wu Jing and then Liu Dohua and then uh, Li Xue Jian. And, and one is like the first Wandering Earth movie when Jupiter got exploded and that's the Wu Jing shot, which did already happen in the first movie. The second one is Liu Dehua in the uh, kind of a we really weird suits and kind of uh, not having any hair looking back, right? Uh, in, in a really chaotic environment. So that is maybe future, but we're not sure. It didn't happen yet in Wandering Earth. And the third shot is the old Li Xuejian, the completely white haired Li Xuejian, holding a, like a nuclear bomb thing, right? Whether he taped it to his hand and whether he would press the button or not, like that's the, that one shot. So um, that may be a future, future sort of flash, future forward, backward, we don't know, but <laughs> that shot, he, he admitted it's inspired by old Luoji being the sword holder of the whole thing. And, and he said in his mind, the old white haired Luoji would be Li Xuejian's look, you know, like looking like him. So that could, we, we shall wait till the third movie. <laughs> I wouldn't agree with Xiao Tianzu about your opinion on Wandering Earth and focusing on AI and, and it's not Wandering Earth. I actually thought it's the greatest thing they've done is they don't, don't just make it about pushing the Earth away from its orbit and send it to a different galaxy, or not different galaxy, solar system. Um, the whole idea of having that AI underlying it makes it so much more interesting because I hope, and I think, judging from so far what they've done, they're gonna do a new version of the AI story that we haven't seen yet in, in the main, major sort of like film television release of this whole thing, which is not nothing really that different from, say, you know, like what we've already have, but but it hasn't been really suggested and talked about extensively. Um, in say, say if you see like Hollywood film production or American television series, right? There are a couple of versions of like the AI artificial intelligence and, and or versions of future uh, that might be happening. 
Um, and I think Wandering Earth is probably trying to do a different version of that. And they, they, so based on what I can tell, I'm guessing they're gonna, they're gonna have a very interesting in-depth talk about artificial intelligence and human, the relationship between them. In the third movie, uh, when it happens over the three years after the first movie, so 2078 in the film's time setting, the story of, um, the helium flash happening because in the original short story it got mentioned it kind of like happens but the film are completely different from from the story uh, from the novel anymore so it's totally it's new thing but it's gonna have that whole crisis of the helium flash crisis happening and some of the things that the original story short story talked about about the scientists and the people who actually support you know, the whole prediction of this is going to happen, getting accused by the society and getting sentenced. I don't know if they're going to do the version where they put 5,000 people onto the surface of the earth and freeze them to death. Hopefully not uh, in a different way, but that similar thing is going to happen. It's going to link into basically how AI views the thing and how humans views the thing and how the game theory between, between the top, top humans and Moss. And it's going to be very interesting, basically. I don't think it's going to be a very simple explanation about AI or bad or AI is good. Or it will have its very special, detailed um, uh, talk about stuff. Uh, that That is like a different interpretation on the whole thing. Also, Liu Cixin doesn't care. You know, don't worry about Liu Cixin. Zhu <laughs> bu you look at like what he said about like how he commented on the second movie, right? He basically was like, I had no idea you guys are going to go this crazy. And then my original story is like a short story of like 20,000 Chinese characters, which is tiny. And then they, they've totally taken that premise and then start to run wild with it. Um, and it has, it has gotten to a new, so it has become its own thing. And you know, Liu Cixin's original story basically is such a simple idea and it's another thought experiment of say, let's, all, let's put all humanity in, in this jeopardy and see what happens. He wants to see what happens to, to you know? So in a way, like Wandering Earth films are the, um, are the filmmakers' um, fan work or their interpretation or their thought experiment answer to that question. And we put this question out, you know, like, can we do this and that? Just one simple idea of a short story. And then the filmmaker goes, takes it and go crazy, right? It's like fan, fan work. You start to have your own interpretation, which I think is pretty exciting. So far with what I've seen with this second film, it's gonna have their own version of a very, at least, Previously, we haven't really extensively discussed version of artificial intelligence and human and relationship between it and the possibility and, and how you, the discussion of like what makes consciousness consciousness, which is, which would be really cool to see. Um, there are a couple of things. Let's see what I've written down. Oh, where it? Let, let me just look at the chat first and see what's going on. <coughs> the company who made Three Body, right? The animation. Though they previously like the Ling Long is is like okay. I mean, I've watched the first season. I liked it, but later like. Uh, right, the, the, this company also does something that's called questionable stuff, but but they really haven't done the three body well, I have to say. The animation version of the second book of three body on on Billy Billy is so bad. Oh my god, <gasps> unbelievably bad. Like that's like how you should not be doing adaptation. Um, a couple of other things I really found funny about Wandering Earth is just how, you know, this this director. Had he not been a director, he would be a master of cults. <laughs> he can he can create his own religion and then brainwash everybody in, and getting into this and become a huge, huge like um, religious leader. 
this guy is a master of coercing people into doing whatever they, <laughs> he want them to do. He's a master of that. And, <laughs> and they, they've done so many ridiculous things during making this movie to get things for free. So on, on the budget, on the paper, right, this film costs this much money. But in reality, it costs so much more and they just got it for free. <laughs> like this guy, you know, had his real interest, right? Not being filmmaking, but in building his own pyramid scheme, he will be the richest person on planet Earth. <laughs> He's a master of that. <clears throat> oh, Myra, cool to hear that. It is one of the better ones. And even like I'd say for last year, the best drama of its genre. Maybe within a couple of years, you can you can also compare it to others and say it still comes out on top. It's very rare because this genre is very bad and dead these days. So if you can get a good one out of it, it's like great luck. To most peach blossoms, you have to go to like hot pot TV, I think. There's something called Hot Pot TV. <laughs> you just search for it. And then search me. Search Avenue X, you probably can still find them. Most of the most of it are gone. Most of those things on my channel are gone because of copyright stuff. Yeah. But I think it's still on Hot Hot Pot TV. <laughs> cool what that yeah. This guy is like a master of that. He should he like if he branches out and decided to do something illegal, wow, he'll be a master of that. <laughs> He's so good. He literally talked Xu Gong Jituan into giving him resources that probably cost like another 20% of his whole budget if 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 like he didn't get it for free. So there's a, there's a company in China called Xuzhou uh, Construction Machinery Group, Xu Gong. That's how we call it, uh, shortened. So it's a state-owned um, heavy machinery production company that does all kinds of big trucks, big excavators, big huge things, hydraulic, and then all, all those big machines and to use to be used in construction or um, rescue missions or all kinds of you know crazy things that will make mail. The male gender on this planet are very excited. Huge things with gi gi gigantic wheels and huge arms and you know all that. So this this state-owned um, huge huge industry <coughs> company uh, got contacted, um, and then they they were very happy to offer help. And then starting like initially they were just chatting. I was like, can can we like you know like use a couple of your stuff and you just do different painting on the outside. So it's instead of a yellow say excavator that you use at a construction site, you paint it white and you have the UEG, which is United Earth Government printed on it, and we can just use it in our filmmaking in uh, mostly happening around the. Space elevator site where there are many machines and cars that, that's running around, right? Just give it that 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 background thing, you know, like you have a lot of heavy machinery going on. Starting at that, and then gradually it starts to get crazier. Eventually, what happened was um, it's all for free. Xu Gong didn't charge them anything. Eventually, they ended up like they brought a production line on site of the filmmaking of their. In, in Qingdao, um, Shandong, and they had a whole production line draw, like put into the filmmaking and offered them at different times uh, professional Xu Gong's engineers and workers to design things on site, modifying things on site, building things they need for the film on site at that production line for them. So, total, I think they used over 300. Xu Gong's engineers and workers over different time adding together to build things at the site for them and offering over 400 different types of uh, uh no no not 400 over like I can't remember the exact number it's crazy because those huge cards are like crazy they offered like different types of uh, all those machines for free for the film to use them to shoot and they even had to destroy a couple of uh, cars because of the uh, 
there, there's the scene of the space station coming down, right, and crashing onto the land, and that breaks all the uh, stuff there. So they had this huge truck that needs to be basically got the windshield broken, and in one shot you have to see that while the the camera travels. And so so Xu Gong offered that that huge thing, and then they have to themselves go in and crash it, like destroy its wing 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 screen windshield. But it's built with bulletproof glass, and they couldn't do it. They tried for half a day, and they couldn't make a mark on it. So they eventually had to use their own other huge heavy machinery car to just jam at the windscreen to eventually break it and then be able to take that shot. So this company basically offered them all those things for free to, to film it. And well, I guess that's like the best ad um, they've ever done in their <laughs> existence. Because afterwards, like right now, Xu Gong Jituan is so famous now in China. Like, Because previously, there are a couple of other competitors with this, with this group that are also doing similar things that are more well known, like San Yi Zhong Gong, there are a couple uh, ahead of it. And also in size, Xu Gong is not the biggest, Xuzhou construction is not the biggest. There are a couple that's even bigger. But after this thing, they become the best known one. <laughs> At least for now in China. And, and, and previously they were like behind right now. Like this type of promotion and advertisement is, you know, in terms of like, you know, if you put that much money in traditional ads, would you ever, um, would you ever actually, you know, put the same amount of money, right? Would you even get this amount of, um, <clears throat> probably not. If you spend the same money just through the traditional route of doing ads, you're not going to get this much of a response and recognition. So. For Xu Gong, um, this is a really clever investment. I think they've done really good, <laughs> good job. Probably like more than they realized. Um, but hey, it's pretty funny. Let, let me download a couple of pictures. Let me see if I can put it on my, on my, huh? Nope. See, I can't can't use this properly. It's it's on my um, it's on my phone. So this is the truck. I can only do this now. This is the truck. You probably, if you've watched the film, you'll know. This is the truck that they have to destroy the the windshield. Um, but it's bulletproof glass, so they can't actually do it very easily. They have to resolve to brutal force violence to actually break the for a whole day to break that, so that they can take take that shot. The, these are all Xu Gong's stuff, so they you can actually find them in a lot of construction sites in China. It's just it gets a new paint job and it looks different from what it usually would be looking like. This is the coolest thing. I really want to actually have, a, although I'm not a fan of those like models, I would love to have one of the, this, which is the UEG. The, this is called Mantis, which is the coolest thing. So um, this excavator is, divide, uh, is like developed by Xu Gong, which can you look at the wheels, right? It can retract into a normal wheel and it can extend with its arms. So it climbs over, climbs over river and mountain. It can actually climb. This thing with its wheel can be climbing on uneven surface. So they designed this excavator for um, emergency rescue. If you have an earthquake, you have something where the site is, you know, like not accessible. You have to climb over landslide to get to some place that thing can can get can cross river and then climb over uneven surface which is so cool and there's like i think on billy billy they have um they have like uh the operator showing you how that gets used <laughs> looks pretty sci-fi <laughs> doesn't not look like your normal machinery in this world so this phone got all of this for free so if you don't you rent it you buy it I don't know how much money that's going to cost. It's pretty insane. Like any of those machines is like over millions of Chinese RMB to start with. So. <laughs> Are they going to shoot a sequel? Yeah. So when we get to talk about 
But I, I will soon start to talk about three body. Don't worry. Chunming, interesting. Sorry. Thank you for your for your super chat. Yeah, that that is a really cool thing. Um, I I. <laughs> They, they are. I hope they make a small like a toy of that Mantis because I would love to have that one. It's not. It's not like your standard truck, right? It can do all those crazy things. Um, so that's just one side of the story. Um, and this this guy, this director, is even crazier um, at doing other things. Like he he gets what for free. Okay, so he during the first airing of the the film, uh, the first Wandering Earth, when it got out and got popular. There's one guy in China's uh, science academy, so Zhongkeyuan, which is the highest uh, uh, science academy you can get into in China. And this guy is specialized in artificial intelligence. So he wrote an essay online um, and like on social media, basically talking about moss and the possibilities and what is current studies and you know like progress of like what what AI is now. This guy is the leader of the uh, in charge of the uh, artificial intelligence at like, I don't know, development and whatever, research at Science Academy. So he wrote this essay online, put it out there, and this director, right, grabbed him and basically read his stuff and immediately contacted him. And he said, like, come in, come in, come in. And so for the second movie, this guy actually become its official advisor. And he basically got this guy to advise him on the AI stuff pretty much for free too. <laughs> Like, so he gets a lot of free stuff, this director. Um, and he managed to make the whole, whole movie happen by doing that. <laughs> what, what else can you say, you know? <laughs> and also, uh, when, when I talk about like, when something is really popular, it gets like fan, fan art and it starts to have memes and it has to have like the second level of creation that creates its own stuff. Uh, Earlier on, somebody typed Ma O, which is really funny. Um, so in the film, Ning Li, the actor who is one of my favorite actors these days, he played the engineer who is like Andy Lau's boss and, and eventually died. But before he died, he told him to, you know, like the civilization without human is meaningless. Um, uh, so that guy. <laughs> Without anybody's expect like expecting it happening, um, because of his look in the film, he has the glasses, right, and the hair, and then the look, like he tends to look like that. People found out so there's an existing toy, not like actually for the film, completely unrelated to the film, of a seagull that's in the toy form, a soft toy, that looking very much like him. If you just add a glass, rimmed glass onto this toy, it will look exactly like this guy. So they start to create fan art of drawing um, the seagull and calling it Ma, because his character is Ma Zhao, right? Calling him Ma Zhao. So Ma O, Ma Seagull, or Ma Zhao O. And it got popular during their road trip. At the end of the road trip, a couple of days, um, the fans who got to the cinemas started to bring the seagull to, to the screening and then give it to, <laughs> to the actor. It's like, this is your now, is the, you can, like, it, it's like coming out of nowhere. And because of seagull likes to uh, steal food from humans uh, when they are flying around ports. Like, like like bread and also fried chips and stuff. So <laughs> now the whole thing becomes, um, people start to draw this row as a seagull and then the thing that he's obsessed with is eating french fries. And the whole purpose of human civilization now in the manga version of the seagull is eat french fries. <laughs> so why do you make the earth wander so that we can have more french fries <laughs> and so this is the picture of people like like how the actor actually got holding holding it's so funny he's holding that seagull now during the road trip so that's the seagull like it's the white one it's not so clear because of the overexposure but look at that so that seagull now becomes um becomes <laughs> A representation of this actor in this role. Uh, it, you just cannot like not see it once you see it, right? Once you see 
the likeness, you cannot unsee it. And so now Ma Chao has become Ma Zhao Ou, uh, Ma Zhao has become Ma Zhao Ou, and the Ning Li's new, new image is this glass-wearing seagull toy. And it's even going to have its own, um, I think, I think they're, they're taking this in and actually going to actually produce the official franchise, <laughs> official what, uh, merchandise that's going to look like this seagull. Like these type of things, or it just happens and you just don't even know how you can explain like memes and things happen, but they happen. And this is one of those things. It only happens with wandering earth this year in the film, film slot thing, you know, no other film can get this type of special treatment. I really want to get a seagull like that too. <laughs> but, and then if you go on like Billy Billy and you start searching, you're, you're going to see that too. Just type in Ma O. Ma Zhao Hai O, Ma Zhao Seagull, and you're gonna see so many things. Like people even make videos of the like, 3D seagull dancing. It's insane. It's insane. Like all those all those stuff are about that seagull on China's internet. Now it's the biggest thing. Zheng Jia Shu Tiao. It's it's just so <laughs> Like what people, are, what are you doing? But it can't stop people from doing that. Like they do this, they go into like blender or something. They make a 3d model and then they start to make this dance to all the popular music in China. <laughs> I was like, okay. So, so that's like, it, it tells you how successful basically an IP can be and how weird people start to become <laughs> and completely unpredictable. Right, like before this film came out, nobody I think on crew would ever be thinking that Ningli is gonna be connected to a toy seagull, but now he's he's the go. <laughs> it does look like him and I don't know. He's a very cool actor. He's very happy about it too. He's like, okay, cool, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run with it. Oh, and the other thing that's cool about this production is People asked during the road trip to uh, about the director. It's like we're gonna do like fan art. We're gonna do a lot of like art talk, right? Are you gonna? What's your take on it? And the director and the actors are like the more the merrier, you know. Like, like you can do whatever. I mean, we can't wait to see what people can do, and we're so happy to see that. And we have no problem of like, you want to run wild with it. Um, and that's just such a good attitude. Um, a lot of other IPs are not like that, and and and, and Wandering Earth is like the more the merrier. Even like Wu Jing, Wu Jing is like so straight, right? In a way, like one of the straightest straight guy in China. But like he would actually ship the people who ship his CP with other people, which is really funny. Um, there are people who ship him and the director, Guo Fan and him, and there's actually a. Um, Guo Jing Tianfan, uh, something like that. Like they have a CP name in China, and when they got asked during the road trip about like what do you think about people shipping you to, and they were like, you know, like they they would actually be very cool about it, and and and, and they're like, am I really that cute? <laughs> so it's really really fortunate for people who are fans of this IP because they can just play with it however they like. Mm -hmm. And actually the director does go on internet and search out what people have done. And if he likes it, he's gonna, he's gonna repost and just make everyone see it, which is even cooler. I got this in my mail. I just want to show you guys what it looks like. So, you know, <laughs> it does happen. Although I don't think I have any place to put it. Where do I put it? You know, cause I have different places to shoot my videos and every time it's different and I don't have a, I don't have a place I can put this thing on. Like it's going to show up every time. So, you know, where do I put it? Right. I don't have place to put it. So, so I'm not going to put it on camera, but just so you guys see, and really this is not mine. Think about it. It's not mine. It's yours. Cause it tells you, you have like what? hundred thousand subscribers and cause you subscribed. <laughs> Otherwise this would not be here. Right. Obviously I have a channel. If I don't make videos, then nobody would be subscribing. I know that, but still, if you don't click the button and subscribe, this is not going to happen. So it's all your people's. 
can tell you what it feels like. It has very sharp corners. You're gonna, if you're not careful, you can cut yourself on it. And it doesn't look like it's super refined. So I don't know how long it's gonna stay with the glues, like the edges. Maybe one day it's just gonna come off. <laughs> it does have two holes on the back that you can put it on the wall, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drill two nails for it. Um, what else? Yeah, it just looks like that. It just looks like that, so you can see. <gasps> it's so much reflection. I can't make it focus. Yeah, you'll see that. Okay. And then it's that. And the back. And you see, it's not like the super refined things of, of the world. Does it focus? No. But it's just metal. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. And they, they ship it th uh, through FedEx. Shelf on the back. Don't have... You know, like if for it to stand, because it's quite heavy, I would have to then have something for it to, to lean on, which is another, I don't know if I have that much space because it's pretty, pretty, mm, I'll see. <laughs> I don't really have very uh, efficient way of putting this on display. <sighs> really? You bought that? The UEG, because I, I think Shigong did a video talking about they're gonna make it, but I haven't followed up on it. Did they make one? Wow. I, I should get one. I should get one and just ship it to my to my mother <laughs> and let her keep it for now. Um so that looks so cool. That thing would like it has legs. Or or its wheels are on legs and it will stand up and it can tilt tilt up. It can can do all kinds of crazy maneuvers. It's so cool. And I saw the um uh, the video of the engineer, they can sit inside and control it, but they can also be completely unmanned and just having a person on the side pulling on this complicated thing and that whole thing will start to climb itself. I'm like, this is like the coolest toy. Imagine, you know, it's the same type of radio control toy the boys play, the cars goes around your house, but now you just have a giant thing for real climbing over mountains and you just you just stand aside and then pull on all those levers and like that's such a cool thing cool cool okay so if you have access to Taobao you can buy one is it expensive how much does it cost couple of hundred RMB. That would be really cool. I, I should get one and let my mother take it for now. Because earlier on I saw before they had this, like in January, they had a video, but they, they haven't, like it wasn't ready yet. Wow, that expensive. How big is it? I mean, let me just see that. It's a pretty hefty price, but if it's nicely made, yeah, it's pretty pretty expensive, but let's see how big it is and, and what it can do. Oh, cute. Oh, <laughs> it really can do everything, hey? <laughs> I guess like if you have Taobao, you can get that. Yeah, it probably isn't because it's a toy. It cannot be too big. Otherwise, you can't display it. 37, 19, 32 with the arm out. 19, 14. Oh, okay. So when... That would be the body size, <laughs> I think. Nine. That would be the body size. And then it has an arm. Pretty big. It's pretty big. It's not tiny. Um, <clears throat> ha, ha, ha. When? Well, I think you can just buy it now, but it's not gonna yuan chang. Probably it's not gonna come out until a couple of months until they finish making it. <laughs> Looking cool though. This looks really cool. Yeah, you're right. This type of thing, they probably just make it for, for promotion and that. 
But after Wandering Earth, people are gonna buy it just because of Wandering Earth now. I mean, this thing just look at itself is pretty, pretty exciting. You can totally remote control, which is the coolest thing of this. In reality, this huge thing. Look at that, isn't that cool? Like when you can have an excavator standing on its own legs like that. <laughs> I mean, that design is pretty badass. <laughs> Good for them. So, Wandering Earth, pretty much that's all we can talk about. Um, before we go into three body, the one thing that I that we noticed as as reviewers, which makes it really interesting, is twenty twenty three. Mm, for the license of film and television, when it comes out this year, right, each film and television will have a license. If you watch all the dramas, the first screen now is like all the web drama has that goddess, like the red background, and the goddess fly out, and it tells you this goes through the NRTAs licensing and the number it was said 2023 year and the number what that would be the film or television film has film bureau's number and then all the television series has its own number <laughs> this year for films for all the films that came out this year because spring festival new year is january so usually cinema release of films will be the first round of this year's license number. If you look at the license, license number of all the films that came out during Chinese New Year, Wandering Earth 2 is number 2003-001. If you look at all the dramas that got the 2003 license, which means it got approved this year and got its license, Three Body has the television license number 2023-001. So, <laughs> this is Liu Cixin's ear, for sure. Something that's based on his novel, a film, and then a television series coming out at the beginning of this year, and both of them get the first license number of the year, 0001. <laughs> you know, says a lot. And it definitely is intentional. Because think about the dramas that came out, right? Three Body is not the first drama that got released in 2023 and during the Chinese film slot, all the films that came out on Chinese New Year's Day, technically speaking, can have zero one, one because they are all 2003 first round of films. But Film Bureau and, and RTA intentionally gave the zero one one license number plate to these two. Says a lot about what is the official opinion on this type of um, content <laughs> which says we encourage and we uh, we give you special treatment and position um, yeah clearly suggesting that if if you realize what's you know if these things they wouldn't they wouldn't talk about it right but you can see it it's there <laughs> Well, censorship, ha uh, that's an interesting question. Censorship always is here. It's not just in China. United States has its own censorship. You know, if you try to make some content that is like not mm -hmm, mm -hmm, within its mm -hmm, you're not gonna get it made. It also has its own rules about things. It's just like, you know, every, every place has its censorship rules. That's clearly there, um, yeah. I'm talking about, yeah, the number. So, so basically, you know, when you have that number, when, when, when they can choose between, you know, whether I give you one or two, they give you one, they, they kind of like, you know, it's, it's, you go, go figure and go interpret my meaning again. <laughs> and they're never going to be clear. That's the art of like the whole thousands of years of like tradition of politics and things in China, China is nobody ever is super direct and clear about anything, but does not mean there's no rules and does not mean you shouldn't know what's going on. And if you don't get it, well, at your own expense. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
I don't think it's that simple. Like they're fans. It's because they want to support certain type of content from the official point of view standard of what is basically more valuable and what can represent, I guess, the direction of, of things being made in that way. It definitely is not just being fans. Oh, oh, everything is politics. I think about it, the whole world, like nothing is not politics. Even when you don't like it, it's still a fact that everything is political. It definitely is something that, that tries to sort of promote this type of content, right? It has extra meaning apart from just being good content. It has other values in things and you, you can't ignore that. Um, so both, both of the film and television got this license, which Liu Cixin is a happy man. <laughs> if I were him, I'd be so happy. I'd, I'd feel like I can die now and then my life's achievement is enough. For him to have gotten this much, this far, so far, right? Being being a writer, it definitely is enough. I mean, even like say, let's he let's say if he lives another fifty years and he see more stuff getting made, uh, more of his IP get IP getting adapted. Obviously, that's cool. But say if like something happens and he <laughs> goes out now, I don't think he will regret any of that anymore. He he still is is gonna be one of those persons who have done in extraordinary things in his lifetime. It's a life that's, that's, that's already pretty exciting. <sighs> having, having your stuff made in that way, right? Cannot imagine how cool that is. So let's talk about Three Body because we're a drama review channel. <laughs> let's just focus more on dramas now. Pretty close, Chloe, Chloe Ye Wenjie, you're right. <laughs> Ye Wenjie, you're right. It is impossible. And after the second movie came out, right, after, after it got really popular uh, within China, you see all those big state-owned companies that are at all level of high-tech and the, the, the best of best, like power grid, nuclear power, um, heavy machinery, all types of heavy industry imaginable state-owned company have started come out on social media and tagging the director, tagging the film, and then they, they sort of uh, voluntarily created a, a threat of response as for the next movie, if you need us, just shout. <laughs> so you have like over 50 state-owned heavy industry company group officially tagging this film and offering in the future if you need this we can offer you scientists offer you whatever like come shoot at our site or whatever anything you imagine you want we can give that to you that's something that even with money you can buy right it's really cool. Like some of the like 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 I think state nuclear power whatever He Neng Jitan also also came out and saying you know if you need this we can we can <laughs> and also they were like uh, you you can you can go wild with your imagination we'll try to make it up but it's so funny like everybody is writing that line it's like go out with your imagination and we will make it happen including nuclear fusion <laughs> I think literally like the nuclear uh, state-owned places like <laughs> talking about we are working on it and you know not so far down the line we'll make it happen like proper reliable and efficient nuclear fusion that's something that we can really hope for because if that really got figured out and completely can be put into production stably we we humans are would, would go into the next age of energy because we no longer need anything else <laughs> honestly um traditional fuel no longer needed um and all those energy like all those like uh, probably like um solar wind all that can still be there but they're not that efficient right they often don't 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 work that efficiently but say if you have nuclear fusion solved problem forever pretty much for, for at least the next couple of hundred years of energy use on planet Earth is going to be like, okay, cool, it's done. We don't need anything else now. It's, it's more than enough. And if we can get that done, we're, we're good. We're in the next stage of human development in science. That's real. Nuclear fusion. 
See if that can happen within our lifetime. You know, hope that that can. That's that would be a really uh, world changing thing. <laughs> so three body problem, three body. Um, how many people have finished watching it? Probably, I guess, if you're still watching with the one hundred people, <laughs> if you're still online watching my live stream, you probably have finished watching it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. <gasps> I know this is like not the popular genre, and it's fine, you know. Um, usually, you know, like my live stream gets gets more uh, gets busier when when I talk about other things like gossip and fairy tales and <laughs> Xinjiang, which unfortunately I'm so just getting tired of overall. Um, it's no longer the, the thing that I guess like drives more, drives most traffic. Um, it's the thing that drives most traffic, but it's no longer something I, I really care about that much more. Um, it's a very dried up genre in my opinion. So I, yeah, so it's fine. <laughs> it, it's destined to have a smaller audiences, these type of things. But, but overall, I think it's just so much more exciting perspective and, and offers so much more of a wider perspective on things you know when, when you think about like all those things that happens that that's very sort of locked down with our human perspective on planet earth and all that and i'm not saying it's not worth anything but sometimes you want to dream bigger you want to like just open that up to the endless possibilities of the dark universe the abyss that you look into and all that existential sort of stuff going on. And it's just so much more sexier. That's how I would put it. Sexier. <sighs> yeah, the animation is so bad. Don't go and look at it. It's the second book, the animation, and it's very bad. And it doesn't even like talk about what really happens in the second book at all. It just does not make sense. The things does not make sense that happens in the animation. Don't watch it. It's a waste of your life. <laughs> Hidden Blade. It's not in my cinema. So it's not gonna, I won't be able to watch it until it goes online. Not, uh, not available where I am. <laughs> so even if I want to, it's not like I can. <laughs> Um, three body, 30 episodes, um, if you're curious to know everything I, I managed to grab from <laughs> on internet, so I'm going to talk about all that, that I haven't mentioned in the 40 minutes final <laughs> review. It took me two hours to just subtitle that thing, like correcting subtitles, not, yeah. Uh. So a couple of things I haven't been able to mention in my, in my uh, final review. There's, there, there are a couple of very long live stream and interview on China's internet of the director, the two directors actually. One is the on-site director. The other one is more focused on special effects director. And they're good friends. They have a company together. So they've collaborated over the last how many years. They came together and making this. So there are at least like four hours of live stream content solid talking of these two people about everything they've done for this production in China. Um, so I, I just basically take all the information out from there and then I can, I can talk about here so that in case you're curious, <laughs> at least you can, you know, you get to hear about what they've talked about. <clears throat> yeah, the animation new episode, I know they've just stopped airing and say that we're not going to come back until March. I'm like, yeah, did you finish post-production or are you just like too embarrassed about your own bad quality? You want to just quietly slip away. It's so funny. <laughs> Send did you CP? We can start with CP. Let's start with CP. Why not? Anybody, anybody shipping people <laughs> in three body drama version? Cause I, I don't see why you wouldn't, sh why you wouldn't ship Zhang Luyi and Yu He Wei, right? <laughs> Why would you, why wouldn't you? Can you have the link? I can. Um, it's all in Chinese. Um, though. <laughs> uh, okay, so 
if anybody can go on Bilibili who can speak Chinese, help out other people, go and search on Bilibili Yang Lei, Zhibo, Taifang. You, you'll find the link and you can do it here. Because if I do it, I, if I search on my computer, it's gonna immediately break the live stream. It's gonna get super choppy. I've tried it before. Um, he's got one interview where he did it with a journalist and they sit in one of the Hengdian's coffee shop and did that with multiple camera angles. That's a live stream, but it's over an hour and 40 minutes. There's another one where they did it online with cameras, uh, with, with another interviewer who is in a report in the actual studio. And then they are at home. That one is like another two hours. <laughs> so they are, it's pretty intense. They talked a lot about these things. You should watch Red. Yeah, I, I haven't seen the whole thing, but I've watched parts of it. It's pretty good. A lot of people in Three Body are from Red because it comes from the same same director's team. You're too generous with you and just character in your final review. What do you mean? You mean the, the actual novel character? Generous? I am not very generous. <laughs> I think I'm just being like talking about what it's like, you know, to be that kind of person. She is, she's basically a thought experiment. She's, she's not important. She can be a guy. She can be a different name person. Uh, she can be for other reasons, pressing down the button. And if you look at it from Liu Cixin's point of view, right? He is the guy who doesn't give a shit to characters. And he's said that in many of his interviews. He first knows very well about all his characters, who they are, what they've done, their all background stories. He actually knows all of that, but he often doesn't bother to write that out in his novel because to him, talking about that thought experiment and thinking about all its implication is much more sexier, I guess, and interesting than talking about the actual character and who they are and go from that angle of things. So his writing often treats characters very, much like, you know, I can throw you away. I can just use you and kick you out. And he has almost no attachment to his characters. And it's just the type of writer he is, but he actually knows everything about his character, which is really funny. Um, uh, cause he did this with Yang Lei when they were making Three Body. Yang Lei said, uh, he had a conversation with Liu Cixin and asking him about like, when you create this character, what were you thinking, you know, about your thing. And, and Liu Cixin would actually tell him all the things that's not in the book that it's in his head. He has full picture of those characters, but he doesn't bother to write them because he's like, it's not what I want to write. <laughs> okay. So Ye Wenjie in many ways is just a tool. Um, <clears throat> <sighs> Thank you for your super chat, <laughs> Raven, for the, for the caption. Yeah, um, I, I try my best, I think from Last year I started to do CC, so <laughs> a couple of hours extra work for everything, but you know, until AI is perfect and it can figure out everything people are saying, we have to do that, <laughs> put that working. So, um, so basically to, to Liu Cixin, the sexy thing is the thought experiment and not exact who did it. It could be anybody. He did the, so for his first book, uh, Three Body, the most important thought experiment is basically he is thinking in contemporary world with our uh, ac access to information and technology and what we've discovered, right? In natural science, is it possible for an individual to do a small thing that can cause the whole system to collapse and destroy itself? Um, and his thought experiment is this. He said previously before industrial revolution, before we discovered electricity and internet and all that, like all, all the science, right? When we still were basically on wheels of like wooden wheels and horse and, and, and all that farming the land and not figuring out, not even like steam engine. It's impossible for any individual on planet earth to just do one thing, tiny thing to actually kill everybody in a way, like destroy everything, right? or change history. But now 
you know, today, is it possible for an individual, whether they're intentional or unintentional or half intentional or cannot really predict the future, but just as one person for their own personal reason, they did one tiny thing and then causing the whole system to eventually collapse and destroy itself. And so that's his experiment for three body. And then, so he thought of all the plot that basically is his answer to his own question is, can we do this? If we do this, how do we do this? Then he starts to kind of like work backward from that and see, we have to fulfill all those conditions, all those chains of events link to have one person eventually do something and causing the whole system to. Mm -hmm. So that's his biggest experiment of the first book. Then the other couple of thought experiments include, um, Obviously, The Dark Forest is the second book's biggest one, right? That's another thought experiment. He also has the thought experiment of such as uh, in the first book, it also asks um, what is the most essential thing of the development of your science and civilization for human right now? Our science, right? What is the, the, the heart, the thing that decides the future? If you can break through there, you break through. If you don't break through, if you cannot break through, your whole science gets halted and it no longer can develop. So what would that be? His second question is that. And so his answer to that is on the microscopic level, the quantum level, if you cannot break through the very basics of atomic level physics, if you cannot break through, it cannot develop there, then your science basically is toasted for like you, you, you stop. So that's his second sort of thought experiment of the first book. Then a couple of other things. And then if you look at three body as a whole, three books, it includes about 15 pretty big thought experiment. Each can be basically taken out and have its own book and all kind of like imagination that, that, that works around it. But, but Liu Cixin goes crazy with having so many thought experiment re gets played out in his three books uh, that um, if he's a more, sh you know, like money driven writer, he could just break it down, like make it even more spread out in his like 15 different books, talking about each one in one, but he did it like concentrated, just put it in all these three books and you know, go figure people have your own imagination. So. For him as a writer, that's the purpose of creation. The most important drive behind it, in his opinion, is to do the, this kind of questioning and then answer and do that. Therefore, every character is expendable and they're not that important to him. Therefore, um, obviously once it gets written, right, author is dead and then everybody who reads the book will have their own opinion because you bring your own perspective into this thing and you would think, political implication, for example, oh, that's like the biggest thing. Or you would look at other things. You would also like, you know, some people like to analyze characters and then obviously everybody's going to, if it's popular, everyone will have their own opinion or discuss about that. That's cool. You know, that's what creates more stuff, how, how the human creative process works. Um, but I think uh, in terms of Ye Wenjie, this role, um, she is, you know, like, <laughs> It's very hard for you to say in a very simple, like one sentence, you know, she, 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 she uh, is the biggest criminal of all human history, the sinner, the biggest sinner in human history ever. Um, and she's pure evil. Like if you say that, it's a very simple sort of like look on that where, where like I said, she is, she is also a very limited person with her limited experience and she can only make her sort of decision and make up her mind based on what she's exposed to. You know, if the conditions change, she probably would be a different person and doing different things. And that's, I think also in the process of the writer, right? Cause he has to design this person basically to fulfill a lot of criteria to eventually being able to do that one thing that changes humanity's future. Had all those con condition not really been that specific, it wouldn't work. So, you know, Ye Wenjie is basically the personification of that imagined possibility. If we can have that one individual in history that fulfills all those chain, like a link, 
chain of links of event, then this person can actually have this ha doing like happening. Um, it's very clever that he worked all that into the modern Chinese history of the 60s, 70s, leading up to like when he wrote the book around 2006, five, six. That just happens to be timing perfectly, right? You can have the woman born at that time, at that age, having that experience, leading ever step into an, this this obviously fictional place, but still, you know, based on sort of pretty solid science, and then getting this thing down, and then down the line into the early two thousands at this age, being able to do this, and then other people coming in the story, like that whole figuring out process is really exciting, I think, for the writer. You know, you just happen to like, let's sit the story in 2000, early 2000s China and see what would work, right? It just happens to be that China has this history that can actually allow this particular version of one person destroys everything happening. Um, you know, we, like it, it wouldn't be that possible for every, let's say completely situate that in a real part of human history in recent, couple of hun 100 years, let's say, and then having having it like having many possibilities of that happening. Obviously, you can write probably a couple of other versions happening in other countries just happen to have this person during that historical time can do this, can do that. But there wouldn't be that many of a choice out there. It wouldn't be limitless because and I think the writer just digs that it's his own. He likes to do it that way. If you look at all his sci fi science fiction, they are all grounded in very realistic time setting um, history. And then, then from there it goes wild. <laughs> uh, that's his style of doing science fiction. Um, which makes it different, right? From other more sort of out of there uh, stuff. <clears throat> So for the drama production, um, it's fortunate that the director and the visual director, both of them are actually fan, like book fans. And they were the early ones. They were not the, when this book got popular, then they went to read the book one. They always have been very interested in science fiction and they buy those magazines, science fiction magazines in China, because they are readers of that magazine. So when this, when this whole story first got um, published on the magazine, um, they, they were like chasing it, like watching televisions, episodes by episodes, <laughs> chapter by chapter until it finishes. And the director back then were like a huge fan of it already from day one. So he read the first version and then the, the corrected and edited and published version of books. He knows all the history and he's one of those directors who I think in his interview, he said, a funny thing is he, he didn't know he, he was enrolled into a film school for directing until two months afterwards, which is so ridiculous. So basically when he was like graduating from high school, before that he was always, um, always like a enthusiast of drawing art. So he likes to do painting. And when he applied to schools, that was like early on, it was before internet, before all that. So there was very limited basically information about what school does what. And when he applied to Beijing, Beijing Film Academy, he thought he was applying to a, a major that is focused on arts because he wants to do this. And when he, when he got in <laughs> and they started the courses and he realized, oh, they're teaching things that I have no idea of because I, I thought I was in an art school, but no, I was actually in a film school. And now they're teaching you directing and they're talking about film language and talking about camera, talking about shots, talking about like he, in his interview, he said it was like a month or so into the, the actual school. He realized he ended up in the film school, which is like, what? You can do that back then. Anyway, so this guy, when he was like doing his degree and he already started doing directions for short ads. So during the time he was in university, he already started being an advertisement director, earned quite a bit of money that paid his tuition and then more money. And then he started going into film uh, drama making and he made a lot of different types of dramas. He made like one of the most famous one is 
Red, but before that he also did Chuang Guangdong. Uh, it's not like not the first director, but like a second or third. And then he did a lot of different types. He did like romantic dramas. He did realistic historical, not not like the period time historical, but more like contemporary historical. Um. So he's got a couple of years of um experience of doing different types of stuff and pretty well. And then he had a good friend who is the visual director of this film as well. And that guy is one of the earliest people in mainland China drama making who actually went to the big special effects companies um, in the States to study and then kind of see how things get done over there. So he has experience of working in special effects in the West and then came back to China and started to have his own company founded doing special effects. So these two people are friends and they've done a couple of projects before that that basically start to build their own um, experience but also the, uh, the library of doing this type of special effects. And eventually when they got to, I think it was 20, in the interview they said it's like 16, 17. Um, they, they, at a film festival, um, this director met the producer of this drama, which Tencent is about to produce, but they were looking for people. And this producer is also very famous by his own. He produced a lot of other stuff. If you search his name, you'll find a lot of dramas attached to him. At the time, at the film festival, he met this director. They've known each other for a while. And he was like, we're looking for a director who can do who's interested in coming and do three body, like, would you be? And the, this director, Yang Lei, was super shocked because he's been a fan, right, since day one of this book. But, but because of how, how important this book is in China, um, he couldn't believe, <laughs> like, people would ask, ask him whether you want to do it. He was a bit shocked, so he was like, okay, let me go home and then think about it and I'll talk, like, I'll get back to you. Then he went back and tell, told his good friend, the visual director, whose surname is Lu, I think. And he told him, you know, the producer of Three Body just asked me whether I want to do it. You know, what do you think? And because the visual director also happened to be a huge fan of this book, they were like, ah. The guy was like, what? Are you sure? Are you sure it's Three Body? Like the real Three Body? It's like, why don't you take it? Take it now, take it immediately. But, but Yang Lei was like, this is too big. I, I can't be sure. I am a fan. I've only read the book ever from a reader's perspective. I've never thought about being able to direct it. I have to basically switch my perspective now and see it from a per director's point of view and see if I can do it. So give me time, I'll reread the book and tell you. So he went back and reread the book and then the visual director kept, kept bugging him. So before he can finish running the book, you know, once more, the visual director sent him an, him an email that has like 20,000 Chinese characters stating all the reasons why they have to take this project. And then already telling him, if you are worried about visually doing this, this is my plan of doing this scene in the book. This is my plan of doing that scene in the book. For this, we can do that. For that, we may need this. So the visual director already had a plan before this writer, before the director can finish reading the book again and basically screaming at him is like, we have to take it. Because if we leave it to other people, if they don't love the book as much as we do, they're gonna, they're gonna destroy it and we're never gonna forgive ourselves. Because both of them are book fans, so they basically decided to come into this project because they were like, might as well, it's us, you know? Because we're gonna come and protect the IP and if it fails, it fails at our hands. And if, if it fails at other people's hands, we'll never be able to live with that. That's why the drama ended up being this director's work. Yeah. Lu Bei Ke Bai Yitong. Yeah. So it's so funny when you think about that, right? And, and <laughs> they eventually got, it, got this project because, because they just cannot bear thinking if anyone else who don't like it more than they do take it, how and it gets trashed, how bad it's gonna be for them. They're gonna, they're gonna like, we can't live with ourselves if that happens. So that's why it ended up being them. And I mean, fortunately, really, 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 it's really fortunate for, for this IP to eventually ended up in their hands.
now that it's done, when you think about it. <sighs> so a couple of really funny things I heard from their interview, which is just, which is just like golden in the process of making a drama that it's definitely worth sharing with other people. For example, when this director got in uh, this project, they've already started working pre-production. He came in after the team, like the, the production team is built already. Like for example, the researcher, the production design, it's already in place, but the director hasn't come in. So when he came in, he first got uh, he first got told that there's one actor who is already on board and that's Yu He Wei playing Shi Qiang because he is also a book fan and he heard about this and he you know self kind of recommended himself and he's saying like I can do this I know this role so well please please take me and the producer also knows that and the producer agreed like letting him do 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 Shi Qiang and then they went casting for other people. And this director, because he's worked with Zhang Lu Yi in Hong Se and in another four dramas, I think. So he's like, I know him so well that we can work almost without talking to each other. <laughs> so he can telepathically communicate with Zhang Lu Yi on set so that it's very efficient, very well oiled. It's gonna be very easy to <clears throat> work with this guy on set. He decided to bring Zhang Lu Yi in and Zhang Lui also just does look very much like a highly educated <laughs> professor. So they got those down and then also he worked with Wang Ziwen before. So he thought it's a good choice. Um, yes, it's a pretty good judge of um, actor picking. So he got this team together and they started making it. One of the funny things is that there are so many cute stories during, during making of the drama. But I will just talk about one thing. Um, that I've heard from one of his interviews. That's just ridiculous. So during the time when they're looking for sites and trying to film the sequence of the Panama Canal cutting of the boat, they planned it out and figured out every shot, what we need. So they have over 10 locations and they have to stitch them together. So for one shot of this, they would use this and that, that is digitized, this is real, and then we can find a corner of a bank of a river that can take this shot. For next shot, that angle, we cannot use this because we don't have it. We have to find a different set. Within the boat, we have to find that boat to shoot that one thing of, you know, for example, the engine room. Um, the engine room is, is, is a completely um, digital, like the burning and exploding one, but say the the planning, right? During the planning, they were thinking about all the scenarios and they can see all the crew running in the ship and this happens, that happens. So we have to shoot that sequence in that boat, that sequence in that boat. <laughs> so they had to stitch over like 15 different sets together to make that whole sequence. One of those sets they found is in Zhejiang, where, which is not very far away from the uh, drama making hub Hengdian. And there's just one river and there's one area of the bank that just happens to have enough space where they measure they need 500 meters of space or something where they can lay a couple of their made um, real prop of the crashed like ship um, that got <clears throat> they build it they cut it and then they weld it together and crashed it again and put it there and then in the background it will be digital but they have to have like the some of the real space and in the shot and it has to come in from that be coming from that angle because the sun needs to come from that angle for the storytelling whatever so they find this perfect side that's just about the right size the riverbank and then they have a very tight schedule they have to shoot it within these couple of days and then they have to move to a next set of another location they cannot afford to wait there so time is really tight but they have to get that land and then it happens to be a period drama. They didn't say which one. I really want to find out. So there's a period drama that's been shooting in Hengdian. And they are taking that land of that uh, riverbank. They have those tent for the drama built there. The Mongu Bao, the Mongolian tent that are, that are on the site. And they're filming the drama. They are going to still be there for a couple of days. And <laughs> they... The, the three body crew needs the whole land to be cleared, but they got hit there first. So they went to talk to the production team of that period drama 
and say if you can move out like a couple of days earlier or just give us these two days to shoot can can you do that and the other production first was like no this is our land we've paid the money you know like that's our schedule you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna take our <laughs> tent away and because their project is actually secret probably because tencent whatever contract they've signed so they can't tell other people what crew they are they're just saying we're doing a science fiction drama and we need the land for you know and the other crew was like nope eventually they really need the land they have to move and they only have those two days so they they decided to actually tell the other crews like we are doing three body and we have to use this land we don't have other choices and the funny thing is the producer of that period drama is also a fan of three body <laughs> so when they heard that <laughs> like cool you're three body no problem we're gonna move so <laughs> immediately <laughs> they dismantled all their tent and disappeared like they never existed like a wind and before they left they were like you have to make that drama well because because if you don't make it well i'm gonna come back at you and then give you trouble it's so funny so the director got the land for the days they need to shoot it and <laughs> i don't know which which period drama it is um it's shot between 2001 summer to the end of the year and Dian. so <clears throat> any Chinese period drama that's shot in Hengdian from 2001 August to December that has Mongolian tents could be <laughs> could be that drama I don't know which one I should search and guess which one it is <laughs> and thank them for giving the land <laughs> up even like even when they when they got the science advisor it was through the same way so <clears throat> they said when they first had this project they named it Ji Yuan because in the in the book there's Heng Ji Yuan, Luan Ji Yuan, right the permanent era the the chaotic era that's in the first book the three body uh, also later um Wei She Ji Yuan whatever like the so the whole Ji Yuan word is very often used in the three body series of books <laughs> anyway so the director decided we're gonna use Ji Yuan as the fake title of our production and go out and talk to people because they're they're a secret project they can't they can't tell other people they sign contracts so when they first um went through the book and decided we're gonna shoot this here that uh, and this scene there that scene there when they're doing that whole thing when they got to the part where they need to know for example when the characters are talking about during the red coast on the blackboard right we're talking about sound like what kind of diagram should the person be drawing that makes sense for a science major in astrophysics what are the mathematic formula that needs to be written out if a person is working on some things what are the normal mathematic things that needs to be happening right the older all the draft paper what it needs to have what the <clears throat> um red coasts working station should be looking like all the gadgets all the buttons and how in the book it just says she adjusts latitude this number and then it sends the signal to the sun but then exactly what it should be looking like you know physically speaking what are the gadgets <laughs> and what are the pro procedure of you know changing this changing that adjust this adjust that and then sending it out they have no idea and the book doesn't tell you all the details and you know these people are not scientists and they have no idea so they said we need to find real scientists real um observatory real places that can send out those signals and then ask them to advise us how do we build the props like what the set should be looking like digital even digital version of what the dish should look like and you know nanotechnology because uh Wang Miao the character works at National Nanotechnology Center which is a real place in China and they did eventually film it there but we need to know for example in his lab what are the machines what it looks like otherwise how are we gonna do it but these things you can find information online and even when you research you just get one picture that doesn't help at all and then you have the <laughs> photon like collision huge thing like the CERN thing that is just way too much and we don't know what it looks like they searched the picture and then the production designer was like that thing I cannot build that thing I don't know what it is and it's like well a couple hundred meters long in the curved space where do I go and build that set we don't have the money we can't build it so they were like first we need to find the scientists and figure out all the things that shows up on screen and it needs to be right 
So they went to knock on the doors of all the nanotechnology center, um, the collision like uh, pro electron collision like in Beijing center, which is real. All those places, they started to visit them one by one and saying we're making a science fiction drama and we need advisor can you help me can we go and talk and all those science institutions were like no we don't we don't um you know like do this type of thing we don't have um <clears throat> like communication department with like film crew we don't do that so you can't come in <laughs> and a lot of our stuff are actually you know like state secret and whatever you, you can't just come in and film so they went around and they couldn't get anybody open the door and they were like, oh, so what are we going to do? We want to make this as authentic as, and as accurate to science as possible, but then we don't have access. And then they had this, uh, they said they, they had a struggle and then they decided, okay, we have to come clean to these people and actually tell them what we are. We're doing through your body and we need you. So the next round, when they go <laughs> again, they start to tell people, it's like, we are actually Tencent making three body problem. So. We need, for example, the solar radiation, all that science and all that formula, astrophysics, like, you know, can you help us? I need all the nanotechnology and better that we can film at your actual lab so that it's the right machine. Uh, so they went around with a real name. And when they told everybody that they're three body, all the scientists and all the institution, they've, they've like first closed door to them immediately was like, why did you tell us? You know, why didn't you tell us first that you're three body? Had we known, we would let you in immediately. So when they told them, they opened the doors and they actually had at different times, scientists on board until eventually they got over like 60 and 70 Chinese science academy, Zhongke Yuan scientists of astrophysics, of, um, <laughs> of nanotechnology, of, um, quantum, all that. They got all those people and they even had the, like huge conference, like conference. They had like huge conferences with all the main actors, the directors, all the scientists sitting down and literally talking about all the things that <laughs> the drama would actually, um, feature. And what are the reasons behind this gets done that way that and what is current science and then if you need this diagram it needs to look like that and if you need to do this calculation you know all the formula are written down by the scientists and so they had to they had this worked out with those scientists eventually is what you see in the drama where i have no idea because those are just difficult science that i can't understand but if you are a science major in that you probably can tell okay that makes sense that they put it there I wouldn't be able to, but I, I can't, I can't wait to see like, you know, like a reaction from <laughs> astrophysics major person would film themselves and looking at the blackboard of Ye Wenjie writing all those things down and then saying, oh, that's actually correct. That is right. That would be so cool. But I think it pretty, is pretty reliable because they did get all the, <laughs> all the scientists working these things out. <clears throat> Oh, you visited CERN, so cool. It's the biggest thing we have right, in the world of the collision thing. In China, it's a smaller one. Uh, no smaller one, it's a different one. So they stitched like the, the, the long corridor where Wang Miao took the photo of Yang Dong, that's in Beijing, that's the real uh, collider in China. And then there's a huge shot of him standing back and take shot of that big thing. Uh, that was that was the CERN one, got digitally stitched in, and and Beijing also has one, but it doesn't look like that. It's a different type. So they used to like um, like a mixture of reality and, <laughs> and 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 you know stitching them together, um. And what else? <clears throat> for for the science part, that's funny. Oh, and and the sending signals out sending the um, waves out to the sun that also gets they, they they went to the real places that this thing can happen and then basically copied all the uh, gadgets that that needs to put and then they the scientists told them you know when you send that to a to sun for example you need the chart that you see in the in a drama where you and you uses it because it tells you every day of that year where the sun is um at every 
interval of time. So you set it up and once the time hits, like at 12 exact minute, you already set all the pre-setting up, you press the uh, send so it can go to the exact direction. So all that gets basically worked out by real scientists, which is, which is cool. But you know, if it wasn't three body this IP, it wouldn't be possible because it just happens to be everybody knows this IP. Therefore, real scientists get also super excited to have it on camera. <clears throat> Margo, seriously, you live next to CERN? Wow. Yeah, that's one place I would really love to go because it's just like magical. It's the true magic in our world, the real magical place. And the giant collider that goes under the earth, right? For that crossing the countries. <sighs> the marvel of human science. Um, <clears throat> so, it's so funny, right? When you hear those stories about how they get this drama made and how difficult it is. Because initially they really wanted to go to Panama to, to, to take the shots of the canal, but then it was, <laughs> it was 2000, when, 2020 when COVID happened. Nobody can travel, nobody can get out of the country. And so they couldn't do it. They had to shoot all the Panama Canal shot in China and stitching multiple locations together with CG and also with photos and then other data of the actual canal, what it looks like, right? And then just do the magic in post-production to make that, that, that happen. Uh, what else? So good actors also in this drama, right? What they've contributed in my review, I said Yu He Wei did the improvisation. Actually, throughout the whole drama, he is also he is also painted dark. He's much paler, naturally, and he's he said I am a policeman who's like out all the time and chasing criminals down. I cannot be not tanned. So his his makeup, his foundation, his face, and his hands and arms are all painted in every shot that he shows up. <laughs> so he's actually of a different color. And there's one shot that actually leaked his real skin color. I think it was like when he kicked the door down of the, uh, the mathematician and some of his real skin gets exposed and it's a totally different color. It's, so he had to paint himself dark. Also for the actor Chen Jing, actress Chen Jing, one of the scenes um, earlier in the drama when Wang Miao first went to talk to her about like, you know, science and everything at his apartment, the, the actress, cause she's so experienced. She's been around forever. <laughs> she on the paper, uh, the director said on, on page, that scene was just them sitting down talking to each other. When he asked about her, about, you know, what, what the whole thing about physics no longer exists. What does it mean? And then her answer was the physics we know may not exist, but does not mean physics doesn't exist, right? So during that scene of talk, um, <clears throat> streaming, you haven't been to my streaming. Uh, my streaming usually goes to three hours. <laughs> so it's only just like normal. And the director said um, they just feel that scene is weird when these two sitting down and talk because Ye Wenjie is such a... Um, she, she's like when she is there, she needs to be the center of a na narrative and she's the core of everything. She's the person who made it happen, right? The whole three body exists. The, the whole problem exists in, in the book. In the books, all, all the things happen because she started it. So it just feels wrong that they're just sitting next to each other and talk in the dining room. So the actress is the person who suggested, oh, well, let me just like do the collecting the old newspaper, tying them up in the bundle and then later sell it for, which is a very common thing. I've done it when I was little in China where a lot of families, they would actually um, buy newspapers, not like daily. They would actually book it. It's like you subscribe 
and at the beginning of the year, you pay the money to <clears throat> to the newspapers, and then every day they would just you know deliver it in your mailbox, right? So over like a couple of months, you're gonna have a pile of that thing, and then one day you're just gonna tie it up and then sell it to recycling for a couple of RMB, and that's a common thing that happens to almost every family who who has subscription of newspaper. And she's like, why not do that? Because it makes so much sense that she's doing that. And while she's moving around, then the guy can be sitting or walking around her and she becomes the center because she's doing the action. The other guy is still. So they did that scene that way in the drama and it feels so natural and so making sense for a person who live in that space. They're, they'd be doing their work and while having conversation, but it's not in script. It's actually the actors. So when you have good actors, very experienced, good actors. They very easily can give you ideas to inspire you. And when, when you are filming a scene, right, they can immediately grab anything as props and say, let's do this. That will make more sense and make him visually more interesting. That scene happening. Um, the guy who played the mathematician, um, that actor is just so cool. He is so much cooler than the, the small role he gets in the drama. And when he was reciting that math, formula in his dialect when 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 he was in like like standing next to his wife's body and when he started to mutter to himself all all the things that are actually real mathematical formulas he managed to um remember and recite it and i'm like i cannot understand that because it sounds like a crazy complicated formula but if anybody is math you get you must be like math, math expert and then also you understand Chinese and how actually mathematical formula gets pronounced in Chinese <laughs> then you'll know he's actually saying the right thing <laughs> there's one thing though I didn't mention um in my review because I actually recorded about 100 minutes and I cut it down to 40 because it's too long but a couple of things I didn't leave in the final review is um in my opinion okay the drama how they make it in a different airing schedule first if it's only third if it's staying as 30 episodes right now and if they could air two episodes per day instead of one per day it would probably get more traction in china because it's too slow the way they aired it and because of the airing of one episode per day it makes everybody magnifying every episode's problem <laughs> say if you see two episodes dumped onto you for one day you're not gonna have that much attention staring at every minute because it gets multiplied by two but because the drama gets aired one episode per day it makes everybody staring at it much more and therefore you can pick at all the things that's wrong about it um and then it's too slow in comparison to other dramas that air in China, which usually updates at least two episodes per day if they're on air and then making it losing sort of the competition. Um, that's one thing that impacted how slow burn this drama. It's already a very slow burn drama. If you watch it in the whole, you'll see they slow burn it very much, which is very faithful to the book. If you've read Three Body, the first book, a lot of people cannot continue reading the book passing a point because they find nothing is happening. It's boring. They didn't realize, obviously, all the payoff is in the end and it's pretty epic once it passes two thirds. Right? It goes over the two thirds point and it starts to go crazy. But before that, it's just so slow burn. And they decided to follow the book pretty much exactly as the narrative goes that way. So in the beginning, it's really slow burn. People who are not interested or who basically are not knowing what they're looking at, right? Or a little bit impatient may drop out. So this drama's airing actually gave it more problem. Had they air it at a different rate, it probably will be different. Also, after I've watched all 30 episodes, I would say if they don't change the content, just doing minor trimmings of a couple of scenes or adjusting things a little bit, but not significantly reducing the entire length. Let's say maybe just cut one episode out of the whole 30s length. The most ideal way of airing this drama would actually make every episode one hour, slightly one hour, so between one hour and one hour and 10 minutes long and 20 episodes. 
if this drama can have 20 episodes, each episode is one hour to one hour and 10 minutes. And you don't actually change anything. You just do a different editing, stop it at different place, having a different length. It may be perfect because this drama, when you watch one episode, what I feel at, at least while I was watching is each episode is a little bit too little content. Like if you can extend that for another 20 minutes. So basically taking the next episode 20 halfway point into this one, it wouldn't feel not satisfying enough. It, it would feel more satisfying. So if you condense this down to a 20 episode drama, but you still air it every day, one episode, but then every episode is one hour and a little bit more, it probably would be the best solution. But then in China, because this drama goes on CCTV, each episode cannot be longer than 45 minutes. It's CCTV scheduling, right? It, it has ads, it has its scheduling. You cannot have a one hour episode in Chinese television. It's just like, it doesn't work for the scheduling. So it ends up being like this. In an ideal world, if it's a complete web, 100% web drama, and every episode is 65 to 70 minutes, it would be perfect. It will be perfect. Cherby, hi. Finally catching a live after 45, six times. <laughs> they did say they're gonna do a, a shorter director's cutting version of, uh, they did say that. They're gonna trim off a couple of other things to, to make it. I mean, honestly, with the right, right now, the size of it, I, I think it's okay. It maybe just needs to trim a couple of, let's say, 10, five seconds here, 10 seconds there. There are certain repeated scenes that doesn't need to be there. You know, when they are repeating, you, you, if you're watching, you know, there are a couple of repeating scenes of previous episodes that doesn't, didn't need to happen. And then there are, say, the Wong Miao getting crazy with the cam down in his eyes, that whole sequence. There are a couple of things, in my opinion, can be completely cut. That wouldn't affect your understanding, but it's dragging out a bit too long. So I was thinking maybe cutting a whole solid episode, 45 minutes worth of all those trimming things here and there. It wouldn't really change too much of the whole content. And then making every episode longer, it would be a perfect way of airing this slow burn drama. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's a slower drama. Um, yeah, I mean, the right now it's dirty because of all kinds of concerns goes on CCTV, therefore it needs to be that short. And then um, making it 30 is a better idea than, than, than 20, obviously, the, the ad money. But like three body, because of its three body, it has a special sort of like thing. It's, it's not other dramas. So even if they say they, <laughs> Even from Tencent and even if they sacrifice a little bit of that, let's make it longer, therefore make more money, it still makes sense for Tencent to do it. It's not like they can't afford doing that. And and for the sort of narrative quality of this drama, if that can improve that, um, for IPs as special as Three Body, I, I'd say thinking about what is actually valuable about this IP then you shouldn't really look at it as a normal, just making money, you know, like idol drama, any, any like fantasy drama, dramas that are quickly made and just make a buck. It's different, right? For all kinds of reasons. So ideally, if they can do that, this will be perfect. But with the one we have, it's not bad. You know, I mean, if you have like, you can download the whole thing and edit it yourself. <laughs> Although nobody is going to pay me, so I probably wouldn't be doing it, but Technically, I can already. I have the whole thing on my on my hard drive. I can, and I can totally make a version that I think is perfect in editing, just using their, just using all the footages existing. But since nobody is gonna pay me, so I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> so a couple of other things I've collected during the, all those li uh, live streams they've done. For the Gu Zhong Xing Dong, the Gu Zhong operation, the whole thing consists about a quarter of the whole drama's budget. So that one sequence, that whole episode of plan, different plans, different scenarios, and actually going to cut the boat, all the CG, all the uh, on-set stuff, like everything, the budget put together, 
that one episode costs 25% of the whole budget. <laughs> which makes sense, which makes sense. Because their, their whole file is like 64T terabyte. So for my hard drives, like my hard drives are usually like 4T. Uh, that, that's how many? 16 hard drives just for the files of the computer rendering stuff of of the uh, 古筝行动. <laughs> it's pretty intense. The final episode, I think they just don't have money anymore. Because <laughs> cause after 古筝行动, right, it's like all the money is spent. Uh, the whole three body world can can even have like a little bit more but no money <laughs> for the second one for the dark forest they are gonna need a lot more C cg so let's hope for that they can get enough money the drama never stopped uh never explained why Wang Miao's countdown stopped or not yes because the book never really explained that either <laughs> If you read the book, it's like it kind of just like disappeared and got forgotten halfway. And really, it doesn't lead to anything. It's basically the way of the three body people stalk stalking him, making him like feeling, trying to make him die <laughs> before like it actually happens so that they don't have to worry about him anymore. Or it's a type of, you know, like just like psychological battle. So they actually don't lead to anything. It just want to scare him off. And then later in the last bit, in the drama version, it kind of turns into everybody, right? In their eyes, they see you are bugs, you are insects. So everyone can see that word probably in their own language. Um, so so that's what the uh, Sofan can do. Um, and that's that's like, shit. so it never gets <laughs> clearly explained. <clears throat> well, there are still people who don't speak, <laughs> still do speak Chinese. <laughs> ah, healing love. Um, is that the Peng Guanyin one? I've, I've, I think I've clicked open the first episode and I'm yet to continue watching beyond that point. Ah, when did it stop? Um. I'm not sure actually. I think the drama also intentionally just make it very vague about when it happened. But basically that thing, like once it kind of like is proven that it doesn't work anymore, it stopped, I think. Um, it's it's not really, it, it would be ideal. The drama, if the drama offers a clear, like even like the Shi Qiang's countdown, because he has this on his shirt, right? That, 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 that digital clock that's counting down. You never see it again later in the drama. And I would love to have them just one thing, like for five seconds showing you, you know, like what happened to that thing. Cause I really want to know and they never show you. And I'm just like, I'm really annoying. I want to see that. Um, so what else? Uh, there's one more thing, which is really cute. Uh, I want to mention is I think in the interview, the director said where they use special effects often are completely not realized by humans, by other drama viewers, but they did it. So instead of like all those game saying things and clearly CGI things, they've actually CGI something that you don't realize, which is their, um, the 作战中心. So on the exterior, it is that museum in Ningbo, but inside it's a different set. So everything inside of the, uh, headquarter of their, their, like the defense console's head headquarter is a different set. It's built. And then that set, um, it's only real to a point, um, vertically speaking. It's only real to the atrium and it's only real to a point. And then everything above that is digitally built. So they had lighting coming from, artificial lighting from the space. And then they built beyond that point, digital top of the, the um, defense console's headquarter. It's completely so it's stitched together. It's real set plus plus uh, CG, and nobody ever mentioned. <laughs> they were like, "We we look at other people talking about this drama. Nobody mentioned that that they realized it's digitally done." So, you know, that's that's also CG. But but and they've done a lot of those those CGs that that you can't tell. That's actually in in the drama <laughs> because they their set is not fully real. Half of it is is green screened. <clears throat> what 
why you don't act? You would have been great at Chinese actors. <laughs> not in my chart. <laughs> the best way of putting it, it's not in my chart. <clears throat> Good answer. <laughs> Also, also like in terms of being on camera, right? You have to be a particular type of people to actually look good from all angles possible. I am not one of those people. It's very rarely, and also like, it's not just your face, right? Your whole body and, and like how, how you, like it does the camera love you basically. I am not the type of people who, you know, like the camera loves me, I'm not. So I don't look very good on camera, honestly speaking. You will just see me here because I just give you one angle of things. You know, you usually see me like this. But but in in film, right? You have all kinds of lighting conditions from top to from side to from like that way, which makes you look like a ghost. And then you have to have different lens. It warps your face in different ways and different lighting conditions. Like it has to be like three hundred sixty, and then it has to it has to work with the lens. And ideally, all types of lens. You know, whether it's it's wide angle or whether it's like you know like a portrait, but it probably like for me it only works for a particular angle particular lighting condition and particular focal length it, it's not gonna work for everything and i'm gonna look really awful in other things <laughs> so not actress material i know that okay i know that much about camera uh so would never work <laughs> in china like particularly with the aesthetics of who people consider to be people who are you know like enough to be on camera i am not one of those people Uh, so, um, so to, to conclude on this like thing and probably today, let's just think about if you actually have read Three Body, the future books, and, and they are definitely going to make the second and third. If, you know, it's going to be a long process for the th making of all three books, you're probably going to take a whole decade to finish. They've already done four years for the first book. The next one, at least right now, if you go and check Doban, they predict they're gonna throw it out in 2026 if nothing trips them up for Dark Forest. So at least three years of production time, again, gonna start running this. And then the third book, who knows? So we're looking at a whole decade of this thing. So looking forward to the next part of Three Body Dark Forest. Casting, that's the only thing we can think of right now because everything else is like, who knows what it's gonna be like and, and but but we do have to have people casting Luo Ji, Zhang Beihai, Zhuang Yan. These three characters are the mo most sort of talked about characters of the second book. Who is gonna who is gonna be, you know? What do you think? <laughs> do you have your choices? Leave that to your discussion for five minutes, I'll come back and then we'll talk about that and we'll end this live stream.
I'm back. So, how about like let's see what people have been talking about. <laughs> so, Niu <clears throat> Junfeng. Oh, interesting. I don't think so. He's too young. Niu Junfeng is too young, I think. Cuz Luo Ji needs to be in his mid 30s when the story starts. If you count back the years of his age, um he should be about between 35 and 38 when the, when the story starts. So, he's way too young. <laughs> Just that one thing is not going to work. Um Zhang Ruoying is a little bit older. Um, could be a candidate, I'd say. Hu Ge, Wang Kai, too old. Or, they're actually not too old, because they're like, you know, like, a count back five years, it's, it's, it's pro probably right. But the thing is, they're too famous. You know, for three body, if you have a too famous an actor to, to lead the drama, it probably wouldn't be the best thing. You, you want almost the IP to be the biggest thing instead of the actor, so... If they're too famous, like at the level of Wang Kai and Hu Ge's fame, it may be too much. That's just one thing I worry about. They're, they're too famous. Um, you know, just looking at like how the first one worked out, right? Um, and that, that, that level of the combination between talent, suitability, fame, you kind of see the ideal sort of uh, proportion of things. So it could, it must be actors who are very good, but ideally not so famous, like having too much of a fan base, uh, um, and, or, or having too much of the previous stuff they've done that attached to them that people have already created a mental picture of what they are. Ideally, you would, you would balance that off a little bit with people who are not so famous, who've been around for a long time, who can do it, but who are not completely locked down in the perspective and in the mental p images of the of the audiences of what kind of actor they are or what kind of role they can play. Hu Ge and Wang Kai are both a little bit too famous for that, for that purpose, in my opinion. Mm. Batman. Cool. Yeah, that show just feels, <laughs> I don't know, like I now I just like, I don't know how Netflix is going to do, but, but, but I have totally a melon eating attitude now, waiting for Netflix to throw out their stuff and then start. <laughs> would be Wong Kai. I mean, I wouldn't have, wouldn't mind if it's Wong Kai, because I know he definitely can play it, but I just feel he's a little bit too famous. And also he is too easy to expect, right? Because, because of the fame, you kind of know how how it's all gonna look. It would be interesting to have somebody who's less famous and so you can leave that to imagination a bit. Um, it's just my opinion, I think. For three body, the whole, whole thing, you know, whoever gets, gets picked for all the roles in this and for future, ideally it would be people who are not that famous. <laughs> it's just my opinion. I feel like it would be counterproductive if they pick a really famous person. Andy Lau. Well, he still ages, but he definitely doesn't look like he's 61. He looks like he's 45 or something. You know, he's look, he looks like he's between 45 and 50. Honestly speaking, if you don't have all the beautifying things going on with, with, with Liu Dehua, Andy Lau, just, just look at him like a normal day, like camera stuff. He looks like he's between 45 and 50. Definitely not 61. 61! Can you imagine that? So many people become grandpa in 61. <laughs> Chen Xiao Chen Xiao is too, too pretty because Luo Ji in the book never actually gets a clear description about what he looks like he sleeps around a lot okay in the beginning of the and he, he like goes and hunting for pretty girlfriends and have a <laughs> one night stand and then just like go like go to a next target and so he would be a charming guy in a way like the women are gonna like him a lot but he shouldn't be too good looking a type of a guy he needs to balance that kind of oh he would be very attractive to women but then he wouldn't be immediately star celebrity level good looking that wouldn't make sense and and, and he needs to be the type of person who because he goes through a lot of 
changes in the whole story until the end, right? He's one of the um, most sort of um, <laughs> arced characters from the beginning till like eventually what he becomes. So you need to almost have somebody who would be able to be very charismatic without being good looking. Or, or his charm would not be coming from his face and how, how, how sort of like attractive traditional speaking, traditionally speaking that features are. He needs to have some, some quality where, where it's the other things beyond the looks that makes him special. So that's very hard to actually pick, right? For obviously too pretty a guy also would not very like suit the Luo Jiro, in my opinion, okay. Jin Dong, no, 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 Jin Dong definitely wasn't, it's not gonna work. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> okay. If Jin Dong starts to, to be like sleep around at the beginning, you know, like the one night stand young professor at, at, at like the best university in China, he's gonna just drip oil. Uh -huh. Zhang Yi, Zhang Yi. Okay, if it's Zhang Yi from, because right now, I just don't feel Zhang Yi is right. Because in the recent couple of projects I've seen him, I just don't feel he's in the right place. There, there were better times of his acting and his attitude. Honestly speaking, my sensor of, of like, like I had alarm triggered by his performance in, in Knockout. I don't think he's in the right mindset right now of being the craftsman of an actor. His energy is not right. That's just how I read it. I can't, I can't explain him anymore with, with like logic. I just feel he's gonna ruin the row if it's Zhang Yi. So just me now, okay, in time, 2023, if you pick him, it's the wrong choice. Uh, <laughs> I, I advently believe that. I, 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 just, I just like sense it. I don't know, like, I, I just don't feel it's right. His energy is off. He can be a very good actor, but he needs to be sitting in the right place. If he's not, he, he's gonna just like suddenly take off, like just fly off and it's gonna get weird. Li <coughs> Shijian <coughs> Well, that's hard because Li Shijian is not, like his look, like when even when he was younger, I can't think of anybody who looks like him. He is a very special looking guy. Um, engineer guy. Engineer guy, he's also too handsome and he can't act that well. Luo Ji needs to be a bloody good actor. He's not good enough. Wang Yang, I think within his capability, he can do the role. Um, but he also needs to get a little bit adjustment. Um, <laughs> it's not impossible. I'm not saying impossible. Wang Yang could be a choice. Um, you know, like the other person that I think may be possible is Qing Hao. Um, Or, because I also see people like naming like Pan Yueming, which I'm not saying it's impossible, but Pan Yueming is tied down to Kendo in tune. Like he's that IP. So I don't think he can do the three body anymore because you can't just have like him doing two huge IPs of Tencent. It wouldn't make sense. Um, Qing Hao is a pretty good choice. But he also is not too, like he needs to be a little bit younger than him now to, to pull it off. The early, the early Luo Ji, he's, he's right now a little bit too old for that either. Two, uh, who else? Pan, well, Pan now is skinnier than before. He, he, he actually is getting closer to his, to his like younger self. Yeah. And he's too, you know, like he's too, Uh, his good looking is, or, or his handsomeness is on the very good side. Like he looks like a good person basically and too, too soft and kind a person. Whereas Qing Hao has the, has the quality of being a little bit xie mei. It's very hard to explain what that word means in English. But, but, but Qing Hao has a little bit more of that. Although he's still a little bit too old, I think. Um, so, I mean, I would love to actually, if they pick somebody who we never thought of, like in the, uh, people normally think, okay, when we go to like Chen Kun, you know, like people now saying him, I definitely don't think it's a good choice. Like the, all the people that have been nominated and hoping that they can take it, I just hope it could be somebody we haven't thought about. And, and, but somehow when, when it comes out, it's just like really 
fitting and not so famous. But then famous enough that when they talk about、uh, this is the person, we're like, ah,、oh, ah,、oh, we see that. That would be the ideal thing. Duan Yihong, hmm. Duan Yihong, that girl, hmm, neither. Duan <laughs> Yihong is also not so suitable for Luoji. It's it's just my, I can't. It's hard to say, you know, what logical reason I can offer. I just don't feel it's very fitting. Lin Yuxian is not either. No. Ah, <sighs> impossible. So anybody who's not mainland Chinese actor is impossible. Let's just put that that way. If you're thinking about anybody coming from like Taiwan, just just take that out. <clears throat> For all kinds of reasons, they're not gonna pick anybody who's not mainland China person. And it's easy to understand. You just like take a minute, and you'll figure out why, right? So,、um, anybody who's not mainland China is out of the question. Not gonna be picked for.、Mm -hmm. It's only gonna be possible for mainland Chinese actor who can speak very good Mandarin for sure.、Um, ideally, you know, a little bit Beijing <laughs> vibe.、Um, age between let's say thirty five and forty five.、Um, has charm, but not blatantly hitting your eyes. Obvious girl lookingness. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. <clears throat> so, that's the hard thing, right? Let's see, because he's the hardest role and most important male role of the whole series of books. If you don't get him right, it's just not. Dark Forest is toast, and even like you know the last book, Death End is toast too. You have to have the perfect Luoji. Zhang Beihai actually is also a hard guy to cast. The、uh, the guy who is the secret Mian Bi Zhe, who 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 isn't the official one, but who did something that essential to the fate of humanity in the end.、Um, that guy, the military guy,、um, that's also hard to cast and very easy to get typecasted. Because immediately a lot of people would say it would be like、um, Zhang Han Yu, you know that that guy who's played a lot of soldiers. I don't think that's the right choice to go for, because in a way, I think Zhang Beihai needs to be somebody who, who wouldn't be so outwardly apparent to be a hardcore soldier person. Because if he appears to be so、um, hardcore person soldier, appearance wise, then he wouldn't function in the book. Because a huge part of that is, is is like he basically camouflage himself very well, right? And for his purposes, and he he's the like hidden, hardcore hardcore person who does not actually trigger people into thinking he's that kind of person. Or he needs to have like that that type of I don't know. It's very hard to put in words, but you cannot be so cannot be so obviously a soldier. That would be wrong for Zhang Beihai. So that's also hard to cast. Both of them are hard to cast, and maybe we should just go back and look at what Yang Lei has done before and all the actors. He's worked with and pick from there because most likely it's gonna come out of there where somebody he's worked with before. <laughs> Who can play his father? Who? Dai <laughs> Xu. Oh, interesting. Dai Xu. I mean, being an actor in terms of his ability, he can pull. Luoji off for sure, or or he can put he honestly can pull any character off. I do believe he has that. But these days, um, hmm, I've never pictured him as Luoji, but I'm not saying it's impossible. Interesting, interesting. That that's an interesting person. Ah.、Uh. Zhang Qi, do you mean Zhang Qi? Who is that? Zhang Qi Shan. Zhang Han Yu is pretty choice, though. Yeah, cause cause he's the first person who pops into your mind when you think about. But but now when it's too obvious, it may not actually be the best. <laughs> 
you know, it's like the weird balance, the very subtle area where where you kind of feel they're perfect, but they're not so perfect. Whereas if it's too perfect, may may not actually be the right choice. You know, think about Yu Hui, think about Zhang Luyi. Before we actually watch the drama, we, we actually don't think they are that suitable. Or you cannot picture them. You know, it's harder to ima hard to imagine if it's gonna be that good. But eventually, when you see it, it's like, oh, perfect. So, so ideally, actually, it would be somebody you you can't quite hundred percent say, oh, they are the perfect cast. That would actually usually not end up being the perfect thing. You you have to take a step back. It's like a very subtle thing. So, <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope they can pick the perfect person. <laughs> Legend of Enlil, they're promoting like en Enlil recently is moving around a little bit more, but I don't know. Maybe it's because Didi Rabat right now is is in a couple of gossips that they're not putting it out. I don't know. <sighs> yeah, it really has been too long. General Zhang, Zhang Mei's father. Oh heavens! Yeah, that's funny. If they can just do that, it would be cool though. If, yeah, so ETO's leader Ye Wenjie is saying about the guy Zhang Zhaozhong, who is a real general in China. And after he retired, he's like one of those very active on the internet person. Um, and it's very funny. He, he's a pretty eloquent guy. So he does those communication, he does those programs, he explains things and it's very easy to sort of get to the audiences. So he's one of the spokesman person, material person for military. And if you don't know about him, yeah, he's a very interesting guy. He has a lot of programs and uh, <laughs> he, he has fandom in China, basically that, that, that general. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. A lot of people thought that she should like, should look like, yeah, the, uh, the Korean guy. That's true. But then when he actually played around, you're like, oh, he's perfect. Right. So ideally you can have that contrast. Somebody who you can't quite put your finger on when, when you see, like they get casted. But once you see the drama, it's like, ah, perfect choice. That's the best way. You know, everything considered, that would be the best way to cast. Like, so I hope for the dog forest to can pick the, the kind of person. And then they, the script writer will have a really difficult task of rewriting Zhuang Yan because he, she cannot be exactly like the person in the book. In current political atmosphere of things, that is just so objectification of a woman that I can't see that being completely taken from the book and put into the drama and everybody is going to be happy about it. But then it's gonna be very hard to say if you completely rewrite this role, that would also be wrong. So, one of the hard thing about Dark Forest is how do you write Zhuang Yan, the woman, Luo Ji's wife, that that makes sense, that is not too far away from the original, but taking out the problematic elements of the original book, let's just say. <coughs> That's really hard. That's really hard. Cause Zhuang Yan, you know, from any sort of sensible woman's point of view these days is just a little bit too much. <laughs> it's, it's so, so Li Gong Zhi Nan Huan Xiang. It's like the um, science majored straight guy as Liu Cixing is and, and, and his, his like wild imagination of things. That's just like, <laughs> you know, one of the great things that the translator of three body into English has achieved is to erase and almost like take out all those gender based kind of not so politically corrected opinions about things in the three body book that that comes from the author. Um, in an ideal world, you know, you hope that it's not the case, but then I also actually quite understand it pretty, pretty well that from Liu Cixin, his age, his growing up environment, him, him being him, right? Like the, those things that comes out of his, 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 his pens, the way he thinks about things and writes about women or women. Um, and those like deeply ingrained in language and in thinking in the patterns of people looking at things is just such a pro product of, of like him being born at the time. And I've seen a lot of guys, you know, like, like that, who, who, they, they probably don't mean harm, 
but it just brought, like it, it comes out of their head immediately and I don't see, they don't see anything wrong with it because that's the that's just just the normal thing <laughs> of the of the environment they're growing up in and then the way they look at things and yeah I'm very familiar with the type of like views they they, they hold um and then because I've met I've seen people like that and they're not by no means bad people but everybody is limited right and a lot of the times they're not consciously aware of like they're doing this for that reason <sighs> so but 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 when the when the books got translated into English a lot of that got taken out and <laughs> for the better for sure or got rewritten in a much more like you don't see any of that trace way so the translator is like a really good guy good at writing and very sensitive guy at these things and uh, he knows exactly what he's doing <laughs> Zhuang Yan is the, is the person, like the red scarf woman that, that is basically Luo Ji's imagination, like the perfect ideal pretty girl that he wants type of thing. <laughs> so, so, um, she, he's like a pure, she's like a pure object in a way, right? So, so that needs to get worked on and gets, 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 <laughs> gets rewritten. Otherwise it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't sail in today's for anything. Yeah, so that definitely needs to get like reworked. Scriptwriter, you have a task. If it's the still same scriptwriter, uh, well, I hope she she can do it because she's a lady, right? So she probably is more naturally more sensitive about these things. Let's hope that that can get done. In terms of casting, just just pick somebody who who I guess suits the new version because they're definitely gonna write the script in a slightly different way. Um, suits the version of the script. See which lucky actor is gonna get it. Can't wait. Can't wait when the announcement happens, when they finally say, we have started production and this is our actor. Oh. Imagine the storm that that guy is gonna get, whether he's already super famous or not. After the success of the first drama, because before Three Body, Right, uh, because we don't know if it's gonna be good. Therefore, everybody is like, kind of, uh, maybe it's gonna fail. So whether it's Zhang Luyi or Yu Hewei, Wang Ziwen, you know, like nobody quite care about that. But now we we all have such huge expectation. We want it to be good, and and Dark Forest is not arguably, I think, but but pretty clearly the most juicy book of the three in terms of just being dramatically. You have now a character, an arc character who is going to start at some place and end up in some place that's completely different. And he's going to have such a huge twisted and complicated arc. Mm. And you're going to see the whole process and it's in current time, right? It's not in memory. It's not people talking about when they're young, like here Wen Jie. It's like starting at the beginning in time. And then we're going to go with this person until the end of solar system. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> the, this row is just going to be so juicy for any actor, whether they're famous or not. And, and in a way, even if you are one of the most famous actor in China right now, the IP is still bigger, bigger than you. And it, it's like, whether you have that, <laughs> whether you can hold it, whether that thing like huge thing just got dumped on you and whether you're able to hold it up. For anybody, it's it's a huge challenge. okay? <laughs> Dark Forest, the first like hugely epic and it's not gonna be easy to do um, thing would be the 2000 fireworks in space thing. <laughs> if you've read the book, you'll know. Um, but already, I think in the latest interview I've heard that's done by um, both the Yang Lei and Lu Wei Ke, both of them sitting there and getting interviewed. They already are talking about the, the second one. And they're already thinking about uh, visual effects of the spaceship. Um, that, that How they're going to do it. Because they say like in all the sci-fi you've seen these days, whether it's in Star Trek, which probably is the most influential one, like people just take the huge space or 
air、um, sort of like aircraft carrier in human world in, on on planet Earth. They just take these things and and into space, and they're all huge. But they're but basically they're saying. Realistically, to build that huge thing and send it to space does not make sense. If you have like deep space traveling crafts, and <laughs> it would be stupid to build them like that ginormous size. And how do you even do it? Even with like much much more improved technology, it's still gonna be insane. So, and also like when. Obviously, when things explode in space, they're not gonna burn, right? Like the way it burns on Earth. So, how are you gonna visually represent that? They're already thinking about these things. So, let's just let's just say fingers crossed. Also, I think online, I just saw this before I sat down today, which is the、um, one of the special effect team,、uh, like people who use virtual projection. I think, like like what they got they used in the Fox Demon. Drama, um, they they're specializing in that, and one of the people who have、uh, worked on Wandering Earth Two, one of the companies that specialized in that special effect side of things, have already, <laughs> on internet, tagged the director of Three Body, drama, Yang Lei, and and like like offering basically saying I am the the company who did special effects for Wandering Earth. If you need me for Dark Forest, just 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 like call. <laughs> And I'm here to do it. So, and then under that post, everybody is just like pushing it up, and then tagging the director and saying, "Oh, this is the real, real guy and real company who's doing it for Wandering Earth too. You guys should get talk together and make Dark Forest." You know, it would be ideal if like Guo Fan can share his his <laughs> resources with Yang Lei in Dark Forest. Oh, that would be so good if that happens. That would be like dream coming true. <laughs> Something that will make me like laugh in my bed and like going crazy. So, We probably should end this、uh, in in five minutes. <laughs> we're gonna end this live stream. Thank you for like the dwindling number of people from like 150 gradually climbing down. Now we're under 100. Like is this is so boring <laughs> and too long. I know it's too long.、Mm-hmm. So let's hope like the people who worked on Wandering Earth can go and help the guy for three body. That would be so good for them if they can get more help and more money. All right, that would be like golden. Space, yeah, space elevator will definitely making the building of those big things much easier. But still, it would be silly just to go crazy with size. Even when you have the possibility of building it right that way, it still would be like if it can be light lighter weight and smaller than. As light and as small as possible, right? Because think about that. What whatever technology you use to propel these things in space, I I I would think like being lesser, you know, like heavy would be <laughs> a better choice. Unless you can completely just break the like the physics laws of like you know like、um, start to go to the type where you you go warp in the space and therefore you totally. Disregard light and speed and all that before you can get to that point. Which I think in Dark Forest they haven't gotten to that level of science, right? It's in the third book when they finally designed the ship that can actually go beyond speed of light. So before you can you can deal with that whole mass problem, probably still gonna be as light as possible is the like the best. <laughs> If anybody cares about Chen Feiyu's scandal, go back to the beginning of my live stream once this finishes, because I talked about that at the beginning. Ah. <laughs>、uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> Wondering if putting through what the recommendation algorithm have here to spread. <laughs> no, I think if I think actually like 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 YT doesn't like Wandering Earth or Three Body. <laughs> YT YT definitely doesn't like it. Why? Because it's Google's company. <laughs> like it belongs to Google. You know. So so why would it like a Chinese sci-fi? <laughs> If you just read New York Times review on Wandering Earth, it's so funny. Oh my god. <clears throat> don't know what, like that guy, who probably is a ABC or I don't know, because like, his name looks like a Chinese surname with an English name, right? So I don't know, like I have no idea what that person is. But oh my god, that review is so funny. <laughs> New York Times also had a review written on the drama through body. I think that one is like more normal. It just looks like a proper drama review about talking about everything that you can look right. Production quality, acting based on this and then script, um, and then like what is the the sort of like it, it's it's like a, it's like a very standard normal drama review, and I've read the whole thing. I'm like that's pretty normal one. I don't see a huge problem. Although people definitely in China, some of them like some of those in Xiaohao intentionally warp what what got said during that like in that review. I don't agree with those people's like interpretation because they intentionally mis mistranslate a lot of things. But the one that the new New York Times wrote about Wandering Earth 2 is just like, oh, so funny. <laughs> so, so, so like, you know, like, yeah, YouTube is not gonna like Wandering Earth. It's fine. <laughs> it would be weird. Oh, although I can't wait, you know, when Netflix start to do three body, what's gonna happen? Now my, my melon eating <laughs> spirit is like ooh, triggered and excited to see. I don't think they actually only make the first book. For Netflix, they definitely have moved beyond the first book. Because they have Luo Ji and Luo Ji is not in the first book. And so, so whether they're gonna actually do the whole three books, I have no idea. But that would be crazy if you want to cram that into a one season or I don't know. So let's wait. Let's wait for Netflix. <laughs> Dumb and dumber. Let's see if you are gonna finally bury yourself in the grave with the last shovel, like, shovel of soil. I see people's argument on on YouTube. They've talked about like D and D. They were like, but D and D are really good at adaptation. Like, um, they were saying Game of Thrones when it when off the books, it starts to get weird and bad. Um, that's why D and D being original creator of a story, they can't do it well. But when it's adaptation, they do it really well. So they use that as argument that they definitely can do a good version of Three Body on Netflix because it's already finished books. All the stuff is here. It, you know, it's not unfinished. But I'm like... <laughs> really? But Game of Thrones is essentially right something that's based on the human... European history, or more specifically, the War of the Roses. It's very, very, the British sort of like historical things, you know. So, <laughs> and, and and then Three Body is totally a different thing. Um, <clears throat> good luck to D and D. <laughs> I I just don't see how that's gonna <laughs> work out well for them. <clears throat> Let Let's wait and see. Okay, so. Hopefully Netflix can throw out their version this year. And I think that's also their plan, 2023. And then we'll, 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 we'll have a big melon. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna they're gonna definitely milk cultural revolution and then they're gonna milk it in all the wrong ways possible yeah and then it's all gonna look wrong <laughs> i can i can guarantee you honestly even for today like for younger kids like if they're born after 2000 and and for younger audiences they they've they are very far removed from the 60s and 70s so they don't even have a, let's say they, they don't have even have like the the sort of impression of during those times, like what people are like, how they talk, how they act, what is the normal, 
it's very hard to speak about the details because real life is filled with millions of details. It's very hard to say exactly what it is, but if you can capture the error correctly or not, right? Um, <clears throat> Um, if you're very young these days, you make production. That's about that time. It's very hard for you to do it, right? You have to actually got a lot of consultants and then get a lot of historical materials to help you situate in that time. And I have zero confidence in American people <laughs> to actually get China's 60s and 70s right in all details. Because when you're filming it, you are in all details. The sound, the costume, the props, the way people act, the... The language, the atmosphere, what 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 looks it looks like, you know, all the details, a million details showed in one picture in one frame, and and like hoping Americans can get that right is just like <laughs> hoping pigs can fly, <laughs> you know, that's just not gonna happen. I uh, it's hard for Chinese people to do it right even now, you know, like so so for Americans, good luck. <laughs> Oh yeah, if also like the cultural revolution thing, right? If they if they like use all the actors speaking Chinese, but then they then they uh, subtitle it in English, but then they all speaking wrong accent. <laughs> oh, let me let me picture that. So like all the all the Asian actors in that cultural revolution part, but they're all speaking speaking like completely off Mandarin. That I can't understand. <laughs> oh, that would be so funny. Or already I'm laughing in my heart. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a US based. I think they've already changed it to a lot of US based story because a lot of characters are all Americans. Yeah. Like you can tell, you know, there there are there are like all kinds of characters in their trailer that are not in in, in the book. Um but I think the cultural revolution part you probably cannot take out because of the reason. You know, it's the cause, cause effect. Because of she did that, did that, did that, so it leads to this. So if they if they completely change that, then they have to find a situated in U.S. native history time that suits the 60s, 70s time, and then this person can, because of that reason, did this. That'll be very hard actually to to make up that story, and it's definitely not D and D's strong suit of making up stories. So <laughs> they still have to film Cultural Revolution, and then good luck to them. Oh my god, I can't, I can't, I can't wait. <clears throat> and if it's really bad, I'll definitely send it to my mom. <laughs> if it's really bad, I'll send it to my mom and let her laugh at it and see her reaction. Because both my parents lived through that, and I'll let them watch it. <laughs> I should go home actually and, and find the, my family's old photos. Both of them have kept some back in this, like since they were kids, right? Photos from the 50s, 60s, 70s. There are different cultural revolution photos of my parents. Oh, I, I need to look at those photos. <laughs> And and the drama like you see in Three Body, they did a really good job of recreating everything. So, <laughs> oh yeah, Lei Zhicheng is good. You see, like the live stream is going to three hours and a half. Shit, <laughs> whatever. I agree with the person who said Lei Zhicheng is is good. He's a great actor and he played this role perfect. This guy, he's not that old, but I think he's old enough to still have memory of um, when he was little and what he's seen and then definitely the parents generation have, have shown him. He's grown up in the environment which is still left over memory of the cultural revolution. So he, he can capture that. He definitely knows that. Oh, this guy, this guy knows exactly what Zheng Gong Gan Bu is like in, in the party. <laughs> Perfect. It's like only Chinese people who've seen it, like that parent knows exactly what it's like. It's hard to tell to other people. It's like if you live in an environmental uh, environment like that, it's military, it's back in the 60s, 70s in the Cultural Revolution. What kind of language you speak, what kind of tone you have, how you deal with things, what you look like, how, how you walk, like there's like very subtle things. And only people who actually have memories of that time would be able to fully embody. And that actor, Zhang, Zhang 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 something? I forgot his name again, sorry. Um, that actor is so good. Lei Zhicheng, Lei Zhicheng, yes. Lei Zhicheng is better 
I think he's better played than Yang Weining um, in Three Body. That actor is so good. He just like is a perfect Zheng Wei. Zheng Wei, this thing that doesn't exist in, in the West and you can't really explain what that job is. But that job is more important than, than the... Uh, so, so if you are in, <laughs> how am I gonna explain what Zhongwei is? Zhongwei is a very military, like in army kind of ranks, but also it exists in all kinds of nation, nationally owned organizations. For example, um, it has equivalent. Like say, if you're a state owned school, then the, uh, 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 the, the uh, what's the word? <laughs> Principal of the school is not the number one. It would be Shuji, the secretary of the school is number one. Party leads everything, right? So basically thinking about Zheng Wei as the party leader of a um, organization that's state-owned. state, state owned. And if you are in, uh, depending on the level of your organization, once it goes beyond a level, then the party um, so director becomes Zheng Wei. Zheng Wei is not in every organization. The lower levels would have like Zhi Dao Yuan, that type of name. But if you go over a level, it's Zheng Wei. Um, so Zheng Wei is like a super important type of <laughs> position in these organizations. And Lei Zhicheng, that role, ugh, it just captures exactly what Zheng Wei, ideal and like the archetypical Zheng Wei should be looking like. And he, he's so good, an actor. It's it's almost impossible to explain exactly what is <laughs> that is. <laughs> anyway, that's too much. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna stop this live stream. And uh, I can talk nonstop about a lot of other things in Three Body, but it's gonna be too much. So I'm gonna call it a day. Thank you for the 150 to 99 people. <laughs> I don't know how many who joined me on this live stream. Let's hope this year is going to bring us more good news in the sci-fi world about the progress of stuff. And then once Netflix comes up, <laughs> maybe I'll make a review. <laughs> that would be really funny. But you know, like I, I, I almost can see <laughs> like a rent version of my video of comparison. Golden. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll be Alex for today. Take care. See you in my next video.